If the product you're about to listen to does not satisfy you in every possible way, then please feel free to request a full refund from your current podcast provider. Hello and welcome to Achievement Hunting 101. I'm Fufu Cully Poof and this is level 125. Joining me tonight, or whenever it is that you're listening, is L. 125. That's like more than 100 episodes. His math is not wrong. Corey. Yo! What was that? You fart? There's the energy for you. No, I was. <laughs> That was my kinetic energy being released. Mm. Um, you are kinetic sandy I all the feel time. It. How about you, Nate? Did you feel it? I did not feel his power level. I'm not really sure. It like, is not <laughs> over 9,000. It's not even reading on my scanner. It's so low. About 8,999. Sorry. <sighs> You're, hmm. I don't know where to go there. How was everybody's week? How are you all doing? Busy. Busy, busy, busy. It is that time of the year. Putting up lights, eating cookies. <laughs> do you I've go down some brownies? Do you go down random uh, chimneys eating cookies? <laughs> no, no, I, not anymore. Okay, <laughs> he has the beard for it. Those days are over. Those days are over. I got one too many trouble doing that. <laughs> too many truffles to get you in trouble. Oh yeah, the trouble with tr- truffles. <laughs> I'll add that make it sound better. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's jump into the show. Last week, it was the Game of Awards. Now, no one actually cares about the Game of Awards because really, everybody watched for the trailers. And my God, there was a lot of trailers that dropped. World premiere. That's World premiere. Wow, when next get here? Dun, 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 yes. <laughs> That's our song. <laughs> that, that it is. Um, I lost my train of thought. I had something there going. Oh, but yes, there's lots of trailers. I want to know what all of you guys love from this. I'll give you guys a second to think about it if you haven't done your homework yet. I'm go- the first one I'm going to mention was Hood Outlaws and Legends. Now, I know Nate, you're in part in. Uh, Twitch chat with me while we were watching, and Corey, yes. you were too. L, did you watch? Did you actually watch them live, or did you just um, look at different things later? Sure. Okay, so one of those things. I was in and out. I was there. The stream. I was there yeah. for this one. I knew you. Got you actually yeah. called this one, I believe. What's it called? Helen like, Hooker's character. Wait, what? Don't listen to him. What's the you game actually called? called this game? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that much. Yes, I. So while this one was going on, I was just kind of watching. It's just like, oh, this kind of looks like a Robin Hood game, but like Assassin's Creed. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that one. Yeah. It looks awesome. Yeah. You were like, why is it called Hood? He's not wearing a hood. And I'm like, no, dumbass, it's Robin Hood. And you were like, oh. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly how that conversation went. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There was actually quite a few games similar to this, so it's like a medieval bows and sword kind of thing, like a kind of like an Assassin's Creed type of a game, of a game and atmosphere. Any game like this, it's I'm probably going to be in for. I love this time setting, and this just looks awesome. I'm just hearing Men in Tights right now. Like I don't know if you're familiar with the song. I'm not. You're gonna okay. have to sing it because I'm not either. So you okay? We're so you don't men, know Robin Hood Men in Tights? We're men in tights. We're men in tights. <laughs> hey Nate. Oh yes, I, mean, I do know that. Yeah, that sounds there we familiar. Go. Nate. Oh, yeah. See, when I think Aww. of Robin Hood and the Men in Tights, I think of the Shrek scene. <laughs> oh, merry man. <laughs> Shrek is amazing. I'm awesome. <laughs> it is. It's a great movie. Uh, but that's off topic. Uh, let's go to Corey. What are you? What did you enjoy from the show? What are you hyped for? So I am hyped for Super Meat Boy Forever. Uh, this is nothing new. We've known about this for quite some time, but 
You mean we've heard about this forever? Yeah, but we finally have a release date. So that was the big thing. We have a release date trailer, and the release date is December 23rd. That's right. Like, uh, that's coming that's up, next up week. Fast. That is next Wednesday. And I'll be buying it day one. This is, we haven't seen Super Meat Boy for 10 years. Um, I'm kind of looking up some things, and it was 2010 when this came out. And that yeah, right, was. It's been that long. Uh, I loved Super Meat Boy, and this is this is different. Um, it looks like a runner, so without playing it, uh, obviously, it looks like you control jumps and, and may, maybe directions from various jumps on walls. I'm not sure, but we never see Meat Boy kind of stop. And definitely don't see him go left in any of the trailers. They just show very sn- small snippets of these levels. So I'm not sure h- how I'm going to feel about it completely, but I-, I still think I have all the utmost confidence that it's going to be a great game. And I can't verify this. I'm- I thought I saw it before, but I think it's only going to be like 20 bucks. If so, Ooh. that's a great deal. Uh, I would expect it to be at least that much. Uh, kind of looking at different things about the game. Uh, there is supposedly an incredible soundtrack, and there's boss battles, and there are seventy-two hundred levels in the game. <laughs> I'm what? sorry, how many? Seven thousand two hundred handcrafted levels. Well, that's why it took ten years. My God. And yeah, what? and s- yeah. So, anyways, I, I I'm really I'm really hyped for Super Meat Boy um, Wait, to they, be here they very just, very soon. They couldn't just go to seventy five hundred like a round number or something. Well, I mean, seventy two hundred's enough. I think okay. they got bored. <laughs> One of the bullet points says a story so rich and moving that it makes Citizen Kane look like an unboxing video for a dehumidifier. I'm sure you know what none Take of that, that means. For what it's worth. I was That's just, okay. Citizen I was gonna say, Kane, there's no dehumidifiers. I know all about those. Okay, I figured. <laughs> yeah, that, that I bet that makes a lot of sense to a bunch of people listening, and I have absolutely no idea what that means. Yeah, I, I, I think this is going to have like a different touch because you know, Super Meat Boy was all about him, Super Meat Boy saving Bandage Girl, and this time their parents. You know, I'm a parent now, and this is about them saving their daughter. So I, I think it's going to hit. Pull at the heartstrings a little bit too. It is apparent that you're a parent now. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> oh Stop my goodness. Uh, L. What? I, I don't know why I'm I'm throwing it to you after that terrible joke. But did you see anything at, at the Game Awards trailers that you, that you liked? There were trailers. Um. And my, on the Nate. What? What? What <laughs> caught my? Hey, I got a good answer. Uh, what caught my eye was two different pieces of propaganda for two games I will never play. So the first one, I mean, I feel course, that. <laughs> oh, the first one was, of course, the uh, Super Smash Brothers uh, reveal. Yes. And I was joking. I'm always joking with Peru about how it's just going to be some palette swap with the sword. Well, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Sephiroth was revealed. And the video they showed was kind of a, a parody. Who was revealed? Seth <laughs> All right, I thought you saw. I thought you said Froth, and like I, I, I knew it was Seth or something. I don't know, but wasn't he like Close in enough. the original do, 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 do. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate like cinematic? No. Um, for I the mean, game he might like, have been because Cloud is in there. Like, so. like what? Like. If I remember, like Kirby did, like Kirby was the only one who could save everybody, and he like I think he like sucked up the bomb or something. Like I have no clue who Seth Roth is, but I'm pretty sure like he's kind of been around <laughs> since the like beginning a mouth of the game. Guy mouth. Isn't I think you're guy? wrong. I, I'm gonna. I, I'm I don't gonna know what you're this, thinking of. And Prue can let me know because I know Prue is the Smash Lord. I don't know who what you're talking about, Corey. They're, they're okay, weird. Okay. I mean, yeah, they're weird guys. I know. Prewmate would agree that Prue is the Smash Lord. So anyway, the second uh, <laughs> thing I saw was <laughs> um, 
that Halo Master Chief Fortnite crossover where they did a red versus blue video. Yes. I watched it twice. That was amazing. It was so funny. Brought back some that was great memories. Will so I play I've Fortnite? Never played. No. <laughs> but I've never played Fortnite, but I I kinda want to now. Like I've well, always kinda wanted to us, play. I just You let us know have. how it goes, bud. But now that then Master Chief is in there, it's just like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll play. And you can have ten dollars. It's ten dollars? I ain't no ten dollars. That's it? what I assume. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea how much skins are. That ain't free. Sometimes my nephews are like, "Hey, can I have five dollars for skins?" And all other times they're like, "Can I? Uh, can I give you ten dollars and we get Xbox money for Fortnite?" No, they're buying so, potato skins. Here's the thing: V-Bucks. like, he, yeah, he, he costs V bucks. So V bucks. Costs, yeah. Um, let's see. There's a Master Chief outfit for fifteen hundred V bucks. Okay. Uh, the Pelican glider is twelve hundred V bucks. The Gravity Hammer Pickaxe is 800 V-Bucks, and oh, the Lil Warthog oh, that sounds amazing. is 500 V-Bucks. Or mm. you can pick all of them up in the Master Chief bundle for 2,600 V-Bucks. Now, How much is 2,600 V-Bucks? I'm doing a V-Bucks to USD uh, converter here. And Wait, that's you, a thing? <laughs> no, but you can buy 2800 so this will give you 200 left over for $20. $20 gets you everything Halo in Fortnite. Mm. But then you got to play Fortnite. Then you have to play Fortnite. Yeah. So, like I said, I think I'm going to, and I might even stream it. I might try to get like Brooke and my two nephews to play. I would uh, play with you. We and we could do duos. quads. We can go duos. I'd play. I'd carry you, but I'd do it. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, yeah, for, Master Chief and Fortnite. That was awesome. Amazing reveal trailer with like Elsa with red versus blue getting get, getting in there. Also, uh, you kind of skip past it real quick, but the reveal trailer for Sephiroth in Smash, it's amazing. That was so good. Yeah, they know how he to make a trailer. Killed Mario. Well, kind of. Yeah, had a for a second, a I coming. thought Mario was like dead, <laughs> dead. Like, shish kebab by, by had it uh, Sephiroth. And then it kind of, you know, reveals that he's not. It's just like, oh. Spoilers, quiet. I man. thought I thought Nintendo went there. Oh, man, that's great. Nate, what are you excited for? Well, <clears throat> I'm excited to tell you that the character I was thinking was Marth. Not Nalf. <laughs> it was Marth. Mushmal. Oh. Yeah, which sounds pretty much the same, honestly, when that's, you say uh, from the original yeah, he, Smash Bros. Dark. He's from Zelda. Dark something? He's... Who knows? It was like 20 years ago. Um, but yeah, the trailer that I was probably the most impressed with, and <laughs> the game I'm most it impressed was. with, is probably It Takes Two. Um, yes. Now, if you... Looks amazing. Baby. If you Google this, you might get this confused with the 1995 breakout hit with Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. Yeah, buddy, uh, you're it speaking my two. language. Yes. But no, 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 no. Type in It Takes Two video game or It Takes Two haze light, <laughs> and then you'll actually get what you're searching for, which is uh, this new co-op game from the creator of uh, A Way Out. And like I've, A Way Out, yeah? I was going to say, I've definitely watched It Takes Two within the past year, definitely. <laughs> well, you've got daughters. What are you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's it. Um, yeah, well, yeah. Oh, no, that was it. Yeah, no <laughs> other reason. Um, so It Takes Two is a lot like um, a way out in that it's uh, it's co-op and you are uh, going at it with a friend and they have uh, a Whoa. friend pass. Yes. <laughs> well, hopefully a very close friend if you're going at it with them. Um, and uh, so Bound they're going to do the friend wow. pass thing again, where if you buy it, you have a copy to give away to a friend. So that should be super cool. And that's coming March oh, yeah. 26th. And, and, and the game shows both sides like a way out, right? I think so, yeah. It does kind of like a split screen, kind of has you... Uh, they were showing that. I saw a vertical split screen. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's like know, a way out, which I think is really yeah. cool. It is pretty I like cool. That. You know, and, and the way they shift the cameras and stuff like that, I like the way they do that. I like the way... Um, oh, crap, I can't remember who else did that recently. Um, uh, it's gone. A way out. No, but I'm thinking like uh, another game that I was playing with Nora where they kind of, they do this cool shift, like as you're running away, like the I know, screen I know kinda... what you're talking about. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I don't know the game, but it's like remember. one screen until you get yes. too yeah. far. You start splitting Lego games are like, like There's that. like a, a line that kind of splits between and, it, and like rotates and, uh, well, I can't Lego remember. Lego games not fogs. <laughs> yeah, not fogs. It's not fogs. In, in any case, okay, this fogs. game looks 
like the trailer and the gameplay actually looks like Pixar made this game. Yes. And the, the crazy thing is it's been, what, two and a half, maybe three years since A Way Out. So I don't know no. how these guys are, are churning out uh, something that looks this good, looks this much quality, you know, not having played it, not, you know, whatever. Uh, but it's pretty impressive what they're able to do. Um, There's no way it's yeah. been three years. It's been like two or three years. Yeah. I looked to it be up. Fair, they can surprised. have devs on different need projects. To. They could. It's been two and a half years. The wow. majority of 2018 is like that. Yeah, they absolutely could. But it's still pretty impressive that this developer is pushing out games of this quality yes. every two and a half, three years. And yeah, I agree. I don't know if you mentioned the release date, but it's coming out late March. Yeah, late March. March twenty sixth. It looks like so. Forty yeah, bucks. So. You get a friend's pass. Friend probably can't earn achievements if it's like a way out. Um, did uh, this is this is look to be published by EA again? So yes, uh, late twenty twenty one. You can probably see it on Game Pass. Yeah, I you yeah. just wait to um, Game Pass or uh, you know uh, Ultimate Game Pass Ultimate. Uh, so yeah, I would just wait and get it that way, uh, so that both both people can get the achievements. But it looks great. I'm excited. It does. I had and no idea this was coming. So this was like out of left field. Uh, yeah, those are, those are the best ones. Yeah, just yeah, show that it. Was a never, very good never heard world from it before, premiere. and it's coming out in within six months. It's like and here's that guy case, again. Three months. So. He's gonna start cussing, but no, he actually got the cussing under control, and he just and he just <laughs> dropped this thing that I knew nothing about. Uh, it was looked great. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it will have been three years by the time. Uh, that game comes out. So I mean, yes, definitely. Like it is extremely impressive. Like you were saying, to make a game look that good. And some in companies three years. can't even push out a sequel in that time, uh, much less a completely different game or DLC. <clears throat> yeah, <Cuphead. laughs> completely different assets and stuff. So I don't know. Um, I want to talk about one more. I want to talk about one more trailer, and. Like I said before, anything medieval really gets me. I'm very much into it. But the trailer for Crimson Crimson Desert. I po- I shared it in our in our chat if you guys just want to click on it and see uh what I'm talking about. This is one of the most beautiful games, not for like it's, you know, artistic art style where it's different or whatever, kind of like um it takes two. Just the realism in this in the game and like that trailer there's like five and a half minutes i think it was of actual in-game footage and gameplay and (laughs) wow does that game look good like when you're going through it if you were to pause it and show most people they would not be able to tell that 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 they aren't photographs it's just it's incredible on just how good that game looks. It reminds me of Rise. Like, I don't see button press prompts on screen, but kind of giving me Rise vibes. So, I don't know if um, you guys know about the game uh, Black Desert Online, like an yeah, MMO kind of got, game. Uh, it's got AFK Fishing, I know that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've stayed away from it because it looks like crack, so. <laughs> yes, I agree. Um, I believe this is like the same company or developers or something like that. But this, if I if I remember correctly, this is basically Black Desert, but a massive single player game. So who knows? This might might be like a next next gen Skyrim type of a game, which I'm all about. That sounds awesome to me. I know the three of you will never touch it. But that's on, uh, that's up my alley. Yeah, you are one hundred percent correct. <laughs> now, before we move on, because you're about, I know you're about to. I have one cool. more that I want to announce. I was going to throw it to you guys, see if there's anything else. There's I had one, two, so I was going to see if you guys want to give one. Yeah, more. there's one more I can't let go, and that is back for blood. I'm uh, pretty sure several so of you are excited literally. for this. Day back one for, by back, yeah, back for blood is the newest. Game from Turtle Rock Studios. This is supposed oh. to come out in June, late June of next year. Uh, we'll yes. I'm gonna say you stole my answer. 
Well, go ahead, Corey. If it doesn't I want to hear what I want to hear. June, this will be here. And Back for Blood is basically an original property, and it sees players working cooperatively through the zombie apocalypse, and there will be PvP modes. Now, that sounds an awful like Left for Dead, even in the name, Back for Blood, number four. Uh, and that is because these are heavily inspired, so much so that Turtle Rock Studios is who made Left for Dead. So this is basically Left for Dead 3, but they can't legally call it Left for Dead, so Back for Blood it is. Right. Yeah, it, literally the same premise. They showed off maybe like a minute of gameplay, and it's it, it's Left for Dead. It's a next gen left for dead. I am beyond excited for that. Like I said, that is an absolute day one buy. Pre order pre orders go up. I'm getting it. I'm in. Yeah, if you have I, a PC, you can look for. They're giving out uh, alpha codes right now. I don't know how long they're good for, but that's all. That's all they were giving them out. Um, not something I'm gonna. I usually don't waste my time with the alphas, but if you're interested, that's definitely a thing that's happening. Yeah. I thought about it, maybe jumping in, trying to stream it. I don't know. I also don't want to take a code from someone that might actually play it, play it for more than an hour like I would. Yeah. It looks amazing. Like, that's going to be a, our new Thursday night game. I'm, I'm just I'm just saying it now, Al. Uh, Michelle and Bro. Yeah. It's going to be our new Thursday night game. I don't know if game. Prue's going to approve. <laughs> Prue. Prue. Well, he's yeah. played the first two... Le- well, first of all, he's played the the two Left 4 Dead's and he likes those. So I think your I'm biggest sure obstacle will. will be uh, opening that wallet from L's point of view. No, I think <laughs> the biggest obstacle is playing with L. I mean, wait. That's well, you. you think I wouldn't buy it? And Michelle can split it. Just get Michelle to buy it. Uh, no, no. Full price? Yeah, I don't think she would buy it full price. <laughs> They're so mean. Oh man, you're not wrong, but you're mean. Now I just hope that I'll be able to get, I'll be able to find a Series X by then. What do you think? That's going to so be like a forty dollar really title, it. you would imagine? Do you think that's going to be a full sixty? Oh, not sixty. Really? I think that's going to be sixty. Yeah, I wouldn't it be sixty? Why wouldn't it be? I don't know. Yeah, this is this kind of shallow. This is basically just Left for Dead Three. It's the game that everybody wants. The only reason why it's not called Left for Dead Three is because they can't have that name. It's as close to Left 4 Dead 3 as we're going to, as we'll ever get. Did World War Z? Same studio, same dev, so. World War Z launch at 60? That's different, and Is I don't it? know. I'll let you look it up. It's yeah, 40 I totally now. think this is going to be a <laughs> full price game. All right. I don't know why it wouldn't be. But, um,. Nate, did you have a second game that you wanted to talk about? I did. Um, I was kind of excited by the overcooked, all-you-can-eat, downloadable uh, Swedish <laughs> chef character. I was wondering if one of you guys were going to bring that up. That was Yonder fun. Yonder. That was a fun little uh, crossover. And so I actually... That was. Uh, and there was a weekly um, quest for Overcooked 2 last week. So I jumped in there. Of course, my daughter walked in as I was playing. So we started playing that and... Well, we can only play the first three levels of that of Overcooked 2 before she gets frustrated uh, and we can't play anymore. Um, so I'm actually hoping that they uh, they do a similar thing in Moving Out and they give you uh, like Dr. Teeth uh, or something like that from <laughs> from the Muppets uh, Electric Mayhem. Uh, that would be <laughs> awesome if I could you know do something with that as well. But uh, I yeah, it's a pretty cool crossover. Like who saw that one coming? Oh, I totally did. Oh, well, you should have told me. Hey, uh, Nate, Swedish Chef is coming to Overclock. Overclocked. <laughs> Overclock Remix. Damn, that was a good site back in the remember that? Damn, that was a good time. Overclock. Oh, sweet. All right, if anyone remembers Overclock Remix, give a shout. All right, yeah, but that that's the Game Awards wrap-up. Oh, it I was uh, Fire Emblem. On. Martha's from Fire Emblem. Right. Obviously. Yeah, there I mean, are now more Wait, 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 wait. did you Emblem. not know that? He had, he had to Google it. I, there are I now forgot. more Fire Emblem characters in Smash Brothers than there are Fire Emblem fans. Oh, <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> in the in the world. I, I think Japanese people. <laughs> Wait, did you not know that Marth was from Fire Emblem? I knew that back Why would I know that? Yeah, that's a Japanese game. But I knew that. I was just, it's Nintendo, and well, I fan knew service. that. Why would I know? I that? just assumed that you and L knew that. I knew it back in uh, 1999 no, I when played I played Fire Smash Emblem. Brothers. I played Fire Emblem, but none of them had names as far as I can remember. Wow. <laughs> that was a long time ago. 
It's cool. I need just another. Antenna. It's you just need, another like character this. with a sword that no one plays. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you were saying. Yeah. But yeah, game of the year. That's that. Uh, let's carry on. Oh yeah, the uh, Last of Us Part Two got game of the year. Blah blah blah. Who gives a crap? Wait, this a is minute, Xbox wait screw PlayStation. Whoa, Nate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what have you been playing this week? Oh, Which one my... of these games do you want to talk about first? Oh my gosh, I'll talk about the first one first. How about that? So that seems silly, but okay. I was working on twelve days, and um, when it came to the shooter day, I needed to get ten achievements in a shooter. Shooty shooter, and so I figured pew pew. I'm gonna finish off a game of my backlog rather than start something new. Hey, that's crazy! Crazy, who are you? That's I a novel know. idea. I know. So I thought, well, what haven't I played in a very long time that I want to get rid of? And that game is Bedlam. Uh, don't play this game, it is <laughs> it is bad to mediocre at best, and um, it just sounds like a game that fits that description. Well, number one, it, it was released for Xbox in 2015. Uh, I think it was a PC game before that, um, and it was based on oh, old god, time, yeah, old timey uh, shooters, yeah, and um, it, it what? tries very hard. Um, I, I think it might be one person or um, a very small development team, if not just one person, because uh, he puts his name in the title. Um, what are these screenshots? <laughs> I am so confused. I need some context because yeah. there's like it looks like there's 10 different games in these screenshots. Well, exactly. So what they're going for with this game is a lot of variety. So you're getting I, uh-huh. pulled into this this game and every level is basically. Uh, their take on a different game, a different first person shooter game. So there's a halo level. There's a, like a zombie killer level. There's, um, you know, kind of a, a, a knights and wizardry right. type level. Um, there is a 2d scrolling shooting level, which actually isn't horrible. Um, but the game itself is just not great. Um, and it's kind of cheap. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend starting this if you haven't already started it. And I just, I just need to get through it. And the last two levels were just brutal. Um, this is a game that feels like it should have cheat commands for like a God mode or something. Uh, and it was getting kind of buggy at the very end. Um, uh. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, I don't like to talk about games and say, don't play them, but this is, this is a public service announcement. Uh, if you have not started this, don't. <laughs> done and it, yeah and if you have started it <laughs> just get it done as quickly as you can um there are certain things you can do to make it easier to get through the game F- first of all the achievements are primarily um progression based so getting to this level getting to that level there's a couple that um you have to do uh that are level specific and once you get um through a level you can then visit that level again at any time uh, so I, I basically I beat the game and I had to go back and, and do one cleanup on a level, which was that 2D uh, flying level. Right. Uh, and that took me about, I don't know, 15 tries to kind of figure out exactly everything I needed to do. Because you have to get a certain score and you can you basically can't die. Uh, if you get shot at any point during this little level, and it only takes about three to five minutes to, to run through the whole thing. But if you, if you take one hit, uh, you basically can't get enough score to get the 3,500 points that you need. Uh, so I would uh, get kind of far and then just the explosions kind of cover up shots. So you can't really see a shot coming through the explosion. And it's just, so you kind of have to get used to, okay, well, how can I do this without, you know, to make all the shots predictable. So I know where I can be. Um, but yeah, once again, the, the achievements are pretty much progression based with a couple that you go back and do specific things on certain levels. You can get to those through a chapter select. So if you happen to be, you know, your foot stuck in this game and you're a completionist, uh, you can go back to get those things. It's not so bad. I don't think there are any collectibles or any sort of thing where, like, your progress in one level depends upon another level. So just get through the game as quickly as you can. It really feels like there should be a god mode or something. Uh, and like I was saying, the last two levels are just... They go on forever. And I was they just, just about that. Yeah, they Sorry. just don't feel very good. They just feel like they're long just to be long. Um. Yeah, uh, one is strategy. It, it, Go ahead. Is the game just like a buggy mess or something? Because 
I watched a trailer, and the trailer looks very interesting. I wouldn't say it's a, it's a super buggy mess, but there are some places where it kind of hiccups a little bit. I think it's probably because of, um, you know, when this was written, um, it, you know, just, you know, just an older game. Yeah. It's just an older game. Um, one of the problems that you'll have is there are kind of hiccups at certain parts of the game. So what you can do is anytime you have full health and shields, save the game, uh, and then make sure you kill all the, the monsters around you and then save the game. Uh, because when you load back in, all weapon drops or weapon spawns, health spawns, armor spawns will be basically reset. So yeah. you can, that's that's kind of how you can help yourself. You know, you get to a point, if you find that you, you, know, you just had a bad run for like, you know, this section to that section, just start, just let yourself die, go back to the load checkpoint and then uh, do it better the next time. Um, and yeah, you can just kind of leapfrog your way through the game and, and finally be done with it. Um, so yeah, I did that. And I'm glad that that is over. It was uh, a little rough. <laughs> <sighs> One of the biggest problems is that they don't give you a good... <laughs> there's no, like, good uh, bread tr- uh, breadcrumbs or bread trails for getting through levels. So you kind of have to figure out, okay, well, where do I really need to go? Uh, and that was uh... a big thing that was missing back in the day. And because of that, they didn't put it in these games. So, like, just pathfinding and, and knowing where to go next was a little bit annoying but yeah so yeah. like i say don't like to talk about games negatively so that was uh, uh but this bedlam. one uh, just don't play it <laughs> yeah maybe just don't play this one that just was bedlam one. yeah yeah bedlam. that's kind of sad because it, it, like i said it, it looks really interesting i mean if it looks interesting to you go for it uh i would just I, say i'm absolutely not going to spend ten dollars after yeah. your uh glowing review yeah what made you try this maybe deep sale maybe what makes me try it? I'm sure I bought it on sale. I'm sure it was on a crazy sale and I bought it and I thought, okay, yeah, why not? Or um, you I'm know, just uh, looking for back, um, easy stuff to dive. Yeah, back I'm sure in, it's uh, going to cost like a dollar. And, you know, at that point, Cougar's losing money if he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> back in 2015, a uh, six to eight hour completion would have been uh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it would have been, you know, relatively <laughs> short uh, completion. I started it back in 2016. And it uh, looks like I got about five, four or five achievements deep. Yeah, at this day and age, a six to eight hour isn't bad, <laughs> but it has to be enjoyable to be that long. Right. Yeah, I, w- I, was, I would say I was not enjoying most of my time. Huh. Well, that sucks it su- that it sucked, but it is what it is. Well, it sucked that it sucked. Corey. I like that. <laughs> Corey, talk to me about one of your titles. So I did quite the opposite of the future. Instead of playing a game for my backlog, I started a new game. Uh, this is Horny. I'm sorry, Haven. Uh, Haven is a brand new game. It is on Game Pass. So hey, that's where game you pass. can play it. Uh, it's on, uh, is it Play Anywhere title? Yeah, so you can play on PC or Xbox, saves transfer over and all that. Mm. But uh, you probably I don't even play know it how to work. classify this game. <laughs> you are kind of two people a boy and a girl and you have a ship i think it's called the nest and you have landed in on this like floating islet they like they call it um and as you progress the story just a little bit i've only played an hour about that much oh you 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 learn that you have escaped this I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call them an entity. Uh, it, I think it's like a group uh, or some civilization. I don't know. You've escaped them and you've kind of crash landed in this unknown spot. Um, and it's kind of like Toe Jam and Earl in the sense that so far my main objective is I need to repair the ship because it's not uh, operable at the moment. So I have to go get a wing and like a thruster and and all the other stuff to build the ship. So that's that's the only Toja Merrill piece. And you're you're kind of you're hopping different islands, kind of like they they kind of like they do. But um, like I said, you control both of these characters. And once you exit your ship, that's where the game is actually mostly taking place. You walk or you glide around the the land. You are cleaning up the land. It's kind of like island saver and like you got to clean up the goop so it's actually kind of relaxing and, and kind of chill in that aspect 
And as you're going, you will collect different things and you can collect different fruits and foods. And there's a whole cooking and crafting kind of section that you can do on the ship. And Ooh. you do have to eat and the eating and the crafting do different things. Like I said, I'm only an hour. There's still got a lot I've got to learn about crafting and eating. But that that is something you have to, to do. The other part about the game is while you're out exploring, you will come across enemies. And the way you battle these enemies is turn-based combat. Uh, so another week and I'm doing turn-based combat. The problem is, at Who least as of you? right what, now... What have you done with Corey? At least as of right now, the turn-based combat is only comprised of four moves. One move you, is, is useless to you until you uh, get your enemy down to no health. So these are animals and creatures, but you aren't allowed to kill them. So like they have corrupted. They've been corrupted. And once you get all their health down, one of the moves is called pacify. And you kind of turn them back to their, their state. So it's very uh, friendly towards animals. There's no killing or anything like that. Uh, you can do a, a blast. I think the other one is called impact. They are your only two like hurting mm, attacks. And then you can do a shield that shields you and your partner. Uh, and, and you each have your own hit points. And if you do the same move at the same time, you can like do a, a duo attack. Um, I think the combat is going to evolve a tiny bit based off some achievements I've been looking at. Uh, but so far, that's that's the game, right? That That's the game in and of itself. And it sounds really boring. And I was forewarned by Mr. Moose over here that you kind of got to play it a little bit to like get into it and i will have to agree i uh, like i said i played this for an hour at about the 45 to 50 minute mark is once i was saying okay i will continue this because before that i could see where it was going to get very uh not good and uh, it mostly came in and i don't know we kush and i did not talk about this beforehand so this is the first time we're talking about it Koosh, was this the moment that you get the map? I don't even have a map yet. You so don't have the map, and so no. I don't know what you're doing. Well, but... I hadn't gotten to combat yet uh, when I was when I was telling you, hey, you've got to play this. Okay. You've, got to, you've got to see this out you know, for 45 or 50 before things start to open up. Once, once they start giving you tutorials, start going to other areas and start collecting stuff, then I, I saw the possibility that this game is opening up but it was just taking time to develop mm -hmm. but yeah like i said i think it was about 45 50 minutes when that happened for me uh maybe the hour mark i'm a little bit past that um but yeah you're you're going to these different isle islets is what they call them floating islands and you are not really given a lot of direction on where to go it's fairly linear but if you kind of get turned around which is very easy to do and you try to go back to an island you can do that, and luckily they warn you. They're very clever with their dialogue, and they're like, oh, we just came that way. Should we go back? And you're like, well, no, I really need to keep going the other way. So then you look for a <laughs> different one, and you continue on. And I was telling you, like, you have to get back to your ship. There's a campsite somewhere out there, but there's your ship, and that's where you have to sleep, and that's where you can cook food and stuff. I, I was able to find my way back there, but on the way, like, you do eventually get a map, and I think that helps tremendously. Because you do have to navigate these aisles, these islets, and uh, I that would not have been fun for me if uh, a map did not exist. Yeah, right. and the game seems to be about relationships too. So, like, I, I imagine it's Corey, I imagine you're fast yep. forwarding through the conversations a bunch. I I'm actually I'm I'm not skipping through them. I'm going through them very very fast. So um, you're not letting them finish their dialogue. You're once you've read it, you go to the next thing. <laughs> Yeah, but they don't have yeah. anything else. They they read exactly the text that's on the screen. I'm pretty yeah. sure. No, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm kind of, you know, you could like, kind of glance at it and like get it real quick, and that's what I'm doing. So I'm I am kind of figuring it out. And I did make the joke when I, I said I'm playing horny, no Haven, like like there is like some sexual tension going oh. on between these two guys, <laughs> it's, or, yeah. two, or these, these this man and this woman, and I I, I don't well, know. <laughs> well, there is the achievement mooning the moon. To do a midnight skinny dip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that 
Yeah, that I guess is going to be a thing. But uh, uh, there is an achievement for maxing out the relationship. Uh, I don't know, but like it starts the game out, and like, like you pick the girl up right on the table, and you're about to you're about to get get going. And uh, PG, like, PG, PG. She, she she like stops you. She's hungry or something. I don't know. And uh, sounds the, about the, right. The guy is very. The guy's very, I don't know, let's say like liberal, like he's like, or he's more like a hippie, more like a hippie. He's he's like, oh man, I got these apple dews and <laughs> I'm going to fry them tonight and we're going to steam them this night and man, they're so good and they go with these raw apple dews so good. I don't know. And he does, he's the one who doesn't want to hurt the animals and stuff. The girl is actually like the mechanic, it's her ship. And it's it's kind of funny the the roles that they take, but I, I, I enjoy gliding around the islands the most and uh kind of cleaning them up the fighting is very bland very simple and uh i'm not big on crafting so i i gotta kind of you have to craft everything like once uh but really it seems to be the only benefit is going to be for food i think there's something else uh as well as i get into it but an hour in and it's kind of where i'm at the yeah. gliding through the world looks like it'd be fun yeah, that that is fun, uh, and I know I can. I'm going to be upgrading that based off achievements and stuff. And I think you can you can do tricks and stuff, like, like jumps and flips and stuff. Yeah. yeah, the trailer made it look like it was a, really a lot of fun, kind of you know action out there in the field. And then it turns out the action's back in the nest, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, so I had no <laughs> idea that it was the, that was the type of action that we were looking at, and relationship and conversation. It, it felt to me very much like an indie game that was all about your relationship. Uh, and I was like, well, this is a weird kind of mix but i don't know i'm gonna keep going and see if it if it pulls me back in but yeah well it's got a pretty good rating so far on ta 3.95 it was made by the same people who made fury which is an another like good game so it does have that backing um small spoiler alert it just for the achievements there are achievements related to the endings and apparently you can make a choice um I don't know if there's like a save thing I you can read, do. I read that, and number one, you can save before okay. that conversation you have to make, where you make a you know you br- a branching decision towards the end. Uh, mm-hmm. But you can also dashboard based off of the okay. uh, based off the achievement descriptions or so, so there, there you go. Uh, yeah. So one playthrough should be all you need. Uh, well, you got to be careful. There's another one that I just noticed. Finish the game without uh, getting knocked out. It's I don't think that's going to be too to hard up. if you're if you're careful, but it's I, there. Yeah, I think they say you can dashboard that one. So yes, yeah, you can. Do. If if both go down, you can dashboard real quick, real quick, and um, and you'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to see it out. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep knows. playing it this next week and and see where I get. All right, uh, L, what have you? We need been to play for to? fun and not for achievements, Corey. Because you've been quiet. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to find out more about Haven. Sounds kind of cool. Nate, did oh, you ever I, play uh, I, Eco? You got questions for him? The Dolphin? The Dolphin? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Once again, I'm talking to someone. I don't know what Nate. I'm doing in that game, but... Oh. <laughs> Eco. I've always thought of it was not Echo, Echo the Dolphin. Not Eco, but... Yeah, I thought it was Echo as well. Not Echo the, not Echo the Dolphin. I'm pretty sure it is Echo. I-C-O. I was just being dumb. I-C-O. E-C-C-O, right? Oh, you're, no, you're talking the about Eco. Eco. I-C-O. No. No, what you're talking Ico. about? Yeah, Ico. Ico. I Yeah, never played that. <laughs> I've always called that Ico. Yeah, and that yeah, the boy and the I girl. I recognize it. Which also reminds me of Submerged, but but yeah, I'm familiar. <laughs> I know that's what it, I. It's almost me twenty of. year old game. Uh, when I was looking of at, of course, of course, it's almost twenty. I'm familiar with it. Yeah, that's that's oh right. <laughs> but I was also going to say, um, it it seems to not have that many started people playing it. Like it seems weird. It looks good. Huh. I don't know. Twenty um, to twenty-five there are hours, though. Over set over seven thousand. I would not trust the twenty to twenty-five hour completion estimate. Uh, I was looking at that earlier today. Only one person has voted that. Uh, somebody, three people said twenty to twenty-five. Oh, that was twenty-five to thirty. Uh, th- three people said fifteen to twenty. Three said twelve to fifteen. Two said ten to twelve. Oh, one said eight to ten. I do not expect this to take twenty-five hours. Maybe I say one to two, to fif- maybe twelve to fifteen. <laughs> one to two hours. You need console. Max. Is where he makes a console command drill. So yeah, you, you got to watch out for these new games that people. A lot of people haven't voted for. I think that kind of probably scares some people. I don't think it's going to be that long. 
and uh, it's got it's got a lot of TA right now. Um, yeah. I think that's mo- mostly because you can start it uh, almost after like the first major cutscene, and, uh, and and then it's on your tag, and everything else is kind of. Uh, you, you got to play a little bit to to be able to do some of the things that they're wanting you to do, and then there's a lot of in-game stuff as well. All right, well, you played a nice new fancy RPG, and since apparently my uh, thing is to play an RPG, no, really, not yet, at least. I mean, I, I guess I'm playing the role of these two people, but it has a double yeah, RPG I, uh, designation on TA. Role playing uh, and action. I, 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 I don't know. It, it's it's too it just new. has the action part of yeah. that action RPG. I mean, it's maybe. too new to have the genre specified, but like, I mean, maybe action. I don't know. I, I definitely you're you're definitely not managing it like other RPGs, like Fallout and things like that. Yeah, I mean, if it's RPG, it's RPG light at yeah. best. Everything is a RPG nowadays. Yeah, who has time for an RPG? So, I definitely been, not you, right? No, definitely not me. <laughs> yeah. So after uh, Michelle and Brian and I finished up our uh, point and clicks, we decided to get into a nice short game, or not? Final Fantasy VIII. So yeah, we are nice. Good day. <laughs> We've uh, with seven done. I'm like, why not eight? Let's play eight. So this is a game from 1999. Uh, before, Wait, are you guys playing this together? They're simulating it. <laughs> before Corey and Kenny were born, they, this was 1999. Um, yes, we are simuling it. And actually, the nice thing about simuling this game is there's actually some uh, dialogue uh, choices. So one of us will pick one, and one of us will pick the other, and we'll read what they say. So yeah, we are lame like that, but huh. we have fun with it. And there's a nice uh, walkthrough, but uh, not that I would ever use a guide, apparently. But uh, most of the achievements are tied to getting the Guardian Forces. Um, basically, your summons, for lack of a better way. Ah. So it's more of a... Uh, this is definitely a traditional RPG. Uh, the one thing... I, yeah. I was going to say, I don't remember this game. I know you messaged me the other night about it. I mean, I remember... I played this way back when. Like, I would have been in, like fifth maybe sixth grade when i played this <laughs> that's just insane but i guess i was 19 when or in out. other words to help with to help you uh feel old fifth would have been 2001 oh my god yes i feel <laughs> old but this is another game that just i started and i never beat and maybe achievements and some friends playing along will, will get me to beat it just like finally beating seven uh, so you play the protagonist Squall. So Leon, <laughs> I changed his name. I changed the A to an E, so it's Squell. So I have the E L L. And um, the next <laughs> nice. character you meet is a character named Zell. And I'm like, sweet, I can name him Big Zell. Nope, they don't let you rename him. I was kind of pissed about that one. So that's odd. I know it's weird. Because you can name all your guardian forces, but you can't rename anyone else so far. Oh, I remember Zell now. Yeah, he uh, does a lot of fighties, button combinations to do his moves, kind of like uh, Sabin in, uh, in Final Fantasy VI. Another Final Fantasy I don't remember. Yeah, that one was actually before you were born, probably. Uh, so, so far it's been fun. It's um, definitely the character models look way better than Seven. I don't know if it's because it's remastered. But I think the, the character models are bigger and just more vibrant. And 7 looks like it's aged way worse than 8 so far. Uh, 8 is also well known for its triple triad card game, which I huh. don't understand at all how to play. There was an achievement for playing it and an achievement for losing. So that, those are easy. I don't know if anything else uh, <laughs> will come up later on. So far, those were pretty easy. So much like Final Fantasy VII, you could put on cheats for uh, times three speed, which is the most important one because it's just so slow to the battles without it. No. And you can put on uh, the the health cheat as well. And so no. far. Yeah, well, you still haven't beaten seven, so sometimes you got to do this stuff to, to make it happen, man. So 
Sometimes you got to make it happen. Character models do so, look yeah. better, don't they? Cheating is like so. console More. commanding. Just going to throw that out there. I'm not against console commands. I'm against console commands that unlock all the achievements and you never play the game. There's a difference. I'm all for cheating. I like cheating. I grew up on Game Genie, my friend. That's how I finished uh, Ninja Gaiden in Castlevania and all those back in the day. I would have never done that without Game Genie. I always like Game Shark more. Game Shark was the later era. PlayStation, right? Those saved your, actually saved your codes. PlayStation, you Xbox, put them in. Xbox, GameCube. Yeah, for Game Genie, you would have to re-put the codes in every single time you turned it on. I think Game Shark held on to them, right? I think that was the main difference. Yeah, it was more like game saves. I uh, can't think of any, much more to say about it. It's in Game Pass right now. So that's, uh, we figured it's a good time to start it. Normally it's $20, but I see it on sale quite a bit. But did you play this one, Nate? I know you played seven. Yes, I played this one. Uh, so this is with the uh, furries, right? This is like uh, the gun blades. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, and I forgot to mention the, 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 the one thing that's kind of annoying is the junction system. Every time you find, oh my God, they, there's tutorial after tutorial after tutorial about how to use these junctions. And then you just like wind up putting it on auto junction and just, let the computer take care of it. But yes, it gun blaze. That is correct. <laughs> yeah, so I played this back in the day. I, of course, did not complete this one uh, to my memory. Uh, I played the next one, which was the furries. Uh, and I got even... <laughs> the Moogles? <laughs> you know, even even less into that one. Um, the main character has the tail, right. right? That's why. That's a furry, right? If you have a tail. Oh. Um, I think that... I'm pretty sure that's correct. Uh, don't Google that. Uh, yeah, so I got even less far into that one, if that's not grammatically okay. correct. Uh, fewer far? <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> that's what you would tell me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I, this one did not get me. Uh, I thought the Gunblade was cool, but not cool enough, apparently. Oh, so far. The Gunblade is awesome. So far, we're having fun. And that's what it's all about. And uh, definitely cannot wait. It's Kenny's time. He's going to tell us how he beat Gears 3. Oh, man, smashed it. Tell us, dude. Yes, yeah, so we played Halo 3. Oh, what? I think you might have gotten that wrong. Oh, wrong frick. IP. Got yeah. confused. Played a wrong exclusive. Well, the one thing I wanted to mention about Halo 3 is we did annual. Um, We... we Wound up getting the game complete for Sarah, which was great with me, Vicky, and Alex. And I was expecting to be able to stream for a decent amount of time because, you know, these things always take a while. But no, we crushed it. We did it in under an hour. I don't want to hear that. I'm not. I want to hear that you struggled. I'm not saying <laughs> we didn't struggle. And oh, we son really of didn't. A gun. I'm not saying that we didn't struggle because L wasn't on the team. Mm. All I'm saying is we did better. I did better with this group <laughs> than with Prue, L, and Michelle. Well, Alex is. A, it very well could have been Michelle's fault. Alex is a god, right? He does the lasso stuff by himself and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so um, about half the time was spent in him trying to skip the first part. Like. He likes to make Halo a platformer, and he couldn't platform. Oh, that thing that prudent and skipping the first part when we did it? Yes. And yeah, so Vicky like I, was, I was telling them, you know, when we were doing the final run on the, go the ghost section, it took us, you know, you, uh, L, you, me, Michelle, and Prue, it took us like 80, 60, 90 tries or something tries. like that. Oh, yeah. With... This group, it took me about, it took us like 25 tries. So we did not struggle at all. That's no fun. Which was actually, a, I was just about to say, it was a little disappointing. <laughs> I, know. Like, I was hoping to have come in and have like these crazy stories about us yelling at each other. But no, nah, yeah. we, we got done. Got to overcome the struggle. I looked at the, at the stream time uh, when we were finished and it was at like 58 minutes. I'm like, crap, now what do I do for the rest of the stream? So we wound up playing Griff Ball and Halo Reach, which was also great. And yes, just to mention Gears 3, I'm making my way through it. Uh, I expected I'm better basically after, halfway through after, after, you, after you knocked out 1 and 2, I expected better. I got distracted with Gems of War. It was the what? final week for the campaign, so That's I was putting a bunch of, of time into that so I could finish that up. Yeah, if you that was, There was time-gated stuff with that. If you have the choice between so, Gears of War or yeah. Gems of War, you pick the better of war. Not the. Gym. Well, that's what I did this week. I played Gems of War. All right. 
Liquid crack. That is. Actually, it's more like solid crack. Uh, Nate, what's your other game that you want to talk about? Yes. So briefly, um, there's a new game in Game Pass as of last week, Unto the End. Now, I also mentioned, uh, I think a week, maybe two weeks ago, uh, very briefly, uh, a game demo that looked cool, which was um, Song of Iron. Uh, and these games seem very similar to me, whereas Song of Iron, you're kind of zoomed in really close. Uh, imagine zooming farther out and you've got Unto the End, although this game is more a little more polished. doesn't look as good um, because the characters, they really just seem like they're kind of drawn more than uh, polygonal. Yes. Um, but you're running around, you're a Viking, uh, you, uh, are leaving your family to go fight. Um, and this game, it's kind of like, I was getting vibes of Limbo, um, a Mm -hmm. little bit because, uh, there was a platforming section where I had to dodge some boulders and I basically had to memorize jumps and, uh, certain boulders falling down that could kill you and like where they fall down the timing for them when you can roll uh in this game you can the combat's actually way more complex than i was expecting it to be you have uh blocking that makes sense right you can block high you can block (laughs) low you can attack high you can attack low well this all makes sense i expect this really throw your dagger okay that's kind of cool you can roll awesome i love being able to roll in and out of combat but then they have feints so you can faint attacking high, so you kind of like whiff and you pull it back, and then you can faint attacking low to get your opponent to kind of, you know, bite on that, and then you attack them the other way. So you faint low, you attack high. Huh. Um, so when I saw that, I was like, oh, crap, this game's going to be hard. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to uh, look at my try. opponent and figure out if, the, yeah, I have to try. I have to see if they're attacking high. I have to see if they're attacking low, and I have to block those. And sure enough, if you go, one of the achievements is for doing uh, the combat uh, demo. The nice thing about this uh, for this game is that when you come back to it after only taking a couple of days off and you've forgotten all that, you can at any point in time go back and do the combat um, tutorial again. Oh, that's um, nice. Yeah, so it's a nice, you know, I, I think they knew they had to do that because uh, the combat is involved. Um and there's an achievement for completing that, so you're going to have to do it one time anyway. But the, it is nice that you can go back and do it at any time, because only after only having taken like four days off from this game, I went back to play it today, uh, got a little bit farther in. Um, and yeah, the combat was hard. Um, I was trying to remember how to do everything. The very the first few encounters you have are against creatures that don't have swords. And that was really easy. And I was like, oh, this is yeah, this is fun. You get a little bit farther and you start attacking or being attacked by enemies that have swords. Sometimes they have two swords. The real kick in the throat is when you're fighting two people um, because you have to focus on one of them um, and you can't you very easily deal with two people. So you're going to die a lot in this game. And I've I died a bajillion times. <clears throat> uh, and oh, yeah, another combat move is a shoulder slam. So you can kind of slam into people. There's just tons of options, uh, way more than I was expecting. But like I was saying, it's a little bit like Limbo because, number one, when you die, it's it's very quick to get back into the game. And it just kind of has that feeling to it. Um, and you have to, you know, at least at this platforming section, had to remember where everything was there. The time estimate on the site says two to three hours. Really? Yeah, I don't mm. think that's true. I think if you know what <laughs> wow. you're doing... I think you can probably beat this game in two to three hours. I think maybe your second time through the game, you can fly through it. Like once you've figured out the combat, once you've done that, once you know exactly where to go. Um, one of the things I discovered in this game is that when you go up, you know, you're climbing up ledges, you have your normal, oh, jump, grab ledge. Okay, no problem. Well, then there's also like jump, hit the wall, jump again, grab ledge. And like you figure this out as you're going. Um And that wasn't apparent right away. Um, I am kind of like surprised at how quickly the achievements were coming. So I was feeling that it was a short game. However, there is a challenge element to this that I think is why they're saying two to three hours. I've already completed 27% of the achievements. And uh, the other achievements don't look uh, to be, you know, just by what I'm seeing from them, they really don't seem like they're going to take that much longer. Um, 
Yeah, there's only eleven in the whole game. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so I like yeah, the way you like said I just, it. I thought there was going to be a ton of achievements. So, I, so I do enjoy this, but I would say I think it is skill based. Um, and you know, even though I like those types of games, like I'm not really happy with the combat yet. I think I need to spend more time in the combat, figure out exactly. Okay, well, how do I, you know, know? And once I understand each enemy's combat patterns, maybe it'll just be, you know, it'll feel a lot better. Uh, but yeah, so this may not be an easy 1000, but it, you know, I, I was looking forward to this game and I'm looking forward to keep going in it, but, uh, it's not exactly what I was expecting. Yeah. There's a 100% walkthrough in some of the guides. It's an hour and a half long. It doesn't seem to be cut. So yeah, I mean, it does seem like a quick game. Um, yeah, yeah. one of the achievements is uh it looks pretty hard it has to deal with the final boss and one of the comments is what a seriously ass final boss <laughs> so, yeah, that one might be a little tricky the achievement that's called mastery it says show true mastery of the sword mm -hmm. uh i just not knowing what these were i was like oh does that mean i can't get hit at all throughout the entire game no it only pertains to the last boss and it's not using your knife not using another weapon only using your sword so yeah, and like know. the um, the solution has to do with like constantly repairing your armor and stuff. So I guess that's a a, qual a feature of the game. For yeah, repairing your stuff. Yeah, as you're going through the game, like uh, you'll hit left shoulder bumper uh, to bend down and pick up items. So you can pick up sword, uh, not swords. You can pick up uh, bone, rock, uh, herbs, and things like that. And you'll make medicine out of that to heal yourself. You'll make armor out of that. Uh, to improve your armor, but you have to collect so many of each before you can do that. So far, I've, I've improved my armor one time, um, and there's an achievement for making the best armor. I don't know how many times that is, um, but yeah. I think if you don't know where everything is, I think by the end of the game, you probably won't be able to make the best armor. So I think you need to go to all the different like hidden rooms or secret rooms. There's no map as far as I know um, to get all the, the components. I could be wrong on that, but... Um, Items are feeling pretty rare, and the requirements for generating the armor seem to be they're going up at a rate higher than what I'm finding. So I think you're going to have to be pretty good about getting all the items. Potential missiles. Yeah, that's just my, my gut feeling right now. But, it, you know, I could be wrong. All right. Let's throw it back to L. I see you have two games here that you want to talk about. Pick one. Let's go with it. Oh, man. Which one do you, which one do you want to talk about? Uh, definitely neither, actually. Um it's pure bedlam. The yeah, stuff why are I they chose on to your play. list because I played them. Played a lot of crap this week. Playing to contests. All right. Well, <laughs> Minecraft Dungeons. I mean, it's funny because I have a group with uh, Vulgar and uh, Death Dealers and Michelle, and we never really look forward to playing this game. But once we're playing it, we're fine. You know, we'll complain about this. Yeah, that sounds or the like other a thing. Borderlands boost. Yeah, kind of, kind of like that. Uh, so we. Uh, started the DLC. Uh, there was the Jungle Awakens DLC and the Creeping Winter DLC. Uh, if you bought them individually, they were six dollars each. But if you bought them together, it was ten dollars. So we got that. Well, you're losing money if you don't. I do know. That. It's totally. Did you Did you know that they just released another DLC that's not included in that season pass? I did. I did. Um, and I believe they announced several more DLCs to come. So it wasn't actually a season pass. Mm -hmm. It was called the Hero Pass. So well, they whatever. did some it's sort of trickiness. Bundled. They did some not trickiness. Ev not all the DLC. Right. Um, Em and I didn't buy Howling Peaks yet, but I think Vulgar did because he's Vulgar and buys everything as soon as he sees it. So did you guys do this uh, stuff? You, your Minecraft Dungeons group? We did the base game and we have not done any DLC yet. Um, okay. Kind of waiting to see if they went on sale. Usually there's a big DLC sale. Mm. Uh, but we're just kind of waiting until we pick it. All right. Up again. So, so the Creeping Winter, there's a few different, obviously, snowy stages. Uh, very original stuff here. You, you know, you have an ice stage where you can slip on the ice. <laughs> and uh, there's an achievement for sliding 500 blocks on the ice. So that one's a gimme. And then there's an ice wand you can find. You can defeat five miles with the Wait, ice hold wand. Hold on. You haven't even beat the base game yet? Uh, no. Because we 
I think we kept picking the harder difficulties by mistake and we just got fed up with it. Did you think we should have done that stuff first? I mean, uh, I mean, we we did it before there was DLC, so I uh, I don't know. I guess if you do it afterwards, it's kind it's of a little different. But it's just on the way to, just another way to level up before doing the same stages over and over. I guess. Yeah, there's a. Uh, I, I guess TA doesn't track the leveling. Uh, there's an achievement for level fifty that you're not at yet. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we're like in maybe the the nineties. I don't know. Oh yeah! Wow! Yeah, we were in like level forty or so. So not quite there yet. Yeah, you gotta you gotta level up a, a quite a bit to do the hardest difficulty. Yeah, we're eventually gonna do the Arch Illadron Apocalypse, whatever that entails. But we don't play too often because uh, d- different work schedules and stuff like that. But that was one of the main things we did. Um, most of the rest of my week was playing to Twelve Days of Christmas and G Task. Did you want to talk about something else, or shall we jump right into that stuff? Did you you had one more game, Corey? Corey, why don't you talk about your last game and bring us home with the game showcase? Sure, real quick, because it has, I think, been brought up before, at least in some capacity. I played HyperDot this past week, uh, strictly for the GTAS points. Uh, I needed a lot of points quick, and, well, HyperDot has an exploit that makes it fairly quick. Uh, if you aren't familiar with HyperDot, it is a game where it takes place within a circle. You are a smaller circle, and you are basically dodging enemies. Sometimes you have to collect a certain amount of things or stay in a circle a certain amount of time uh, or just survive. And, of course, there's different modifiers. They make the, the arena an ice arena or there it's very dark and shadowy and you can't see things very well. It's actually kind of a fun game. Anyways, the exploit has to do with uh, syncing achievements across platforms. It is a play anywhere game, so your save does go from PC to console. And essentially, the trick, at least to be the most efficient, is to play it on one of the environments, so say console, until you unlock the one achievement. Stop what you're doing, quit the game, load it up on the PC. One, when you do that, you will unlock in most cases a random achievement now huh. you do the same thing play on the pc so you get another achievement and if you if you're smart about it you'll look ahead of the time and see like the super easy achievements maybe you want to do that on console like like creating a level or creating a level in a specific way uh and only because to me playing with a mouse is far superior to uh playing with a controller in this game so some of them you have to actually beat a level in a certain way and they can get actually kind of difficult it might take you uh several tries to get through it so play it kind of smart to in order to be the most efficient but basically unlock an achievement on one side sync it up to the other side and when you load it up you get a random achievement Uh, i'm pretty sure you get achievements for beating uh like 50 levels 100 levels uh and i'm pretty sure i unlocked uh 80 levels like uh, i'm looking right now four minutes into the game i unlocked beating 100 levels like 12 minutes after that i definitely haven't even done those that many levels i've only done like legitimately 50 something um and doing the miscellaneous stuff i've unlocked all achievements but two one uh, one of them left is for completing a certain type of uh stage which you get after 100 levels so i'm legitimately playing about 50 more levels i'll do that and then i'm hoping the last achievement which is playing a certain mode in a a certain way will pop automatically but yeah it's it's a weird glitch and it will give you a ton of points uh at some point you might keep switching and nothing's happening uh tip go into the statistics of the game look at your like in the game not like the game hub And that will show you all the achievements that you've unlocked. And the syncing is so weird that sometimes you might have something not unlocked, but you've already done it. And so one of the achievements was for dying 200 times. That was not unlocked on my PC save for whatever reason. So I just like died again 200 times. And I'm like, hmm, you see like a little in-game achievement pop. So I saved it after doing that. Didn't get like a brand new achievement, but the in-game achievement updated. 
synced it to the Xbox One version, and then another random achievement popped. So check that. That will be the best way you can do it. And then the last thing I want to mention is they just added touch controls to this for xCloud. And Koosh mentioned it a couple weeks ago when we were talking about it. He's like, oh, man, don't even try Hoverdot. Well, I tried Hyperdot, and it is terrible. <laughs> you you don't even want to you don't even want to touch it with your touch controls. Uh, like I said, com- controller is bad enough. PCs, mouse is where it's at. Touch controls on this game, I, I don't even know how you would survive anything, even for 20 seconds. Um, the only thing worse would be Kinect controls. <laughs> Barely. Uh, I, I played on an ice arena and like it was not happening. And I said, okay, I'll give it. It's an ice arena. You slide. Let me pick a regular level where you just got to survive. And nope, even that one, like the, I don't know what it is, the half a second, milli, you know, 10 millisecond lag, whatever it is. It, Ooh, it, it, you can't yeah. do that in this game. It, 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 you're, you're dead. Can't do it. So it's cool that it's on xCloud, but it, it's, not, it's too quick, too twitchy of a game, I think. The, that is on the platform. You, you can't play it via the cloud, I don't think. Not not efficiently. Um, is this game, I don't know, well, fun? It looks kind of crazy. It is fun. Yeah, yeah it is, is fun. It? It's, yeah. Uh, it's challenging. You feel good when you, you beat a hard level after many, many attempts. It looks like Spiral Splatter. I'm just going to pull my hair out. It's be- better than Spiral Splatter. I'll, I will, that is a 100% true statement. Some but levels, I, yeah. I haven't played it, and I can tell you it's better in Spider-Man. Wow. Some F levels are harder than others, and the curve, the difficulty curve, isn't consistent. So you'll you'll play something, and that level will take you 20 tries, 30 tries, and you're going to hate it. And then the very next level you beat the first time. The next three levels you beat the first time. Uh, That's and then, right. Yeah. And then you run into some other weird combination of stuff, and, you know, you have a hard time. There's There's one level where you have to basically dodge all these pink dots and they're just firing, firing, firing and you have to survive for, let's just say 20 seconds. And I did that thing like 10 times and I was like a tenth of a second off every time and you finally get it. And then there's like version 2 of that (laughs) and I I still have like 10 seconds I have to survive on version 2. I have no idea how how to do that so I might have to watch a video. Yeah, and one good thing is if you do get stuck, if if you're doing all the levels, you know, in order, you will actually unlock like you unlock five levels at a time and sometimes you can get the next set before you're done depending on how many you've done prior so if you really get stuck you can actually kind of skip that one for now and keep going and come back later not that you're going to get any power ups that will help you but yeah you can, you can still progress in terms of all stuff you need to complete yeah but i could i couldn't believe how much easier it is with a mouse uh depending on some of the modifiers making it slower fast like your mouse will be a little quicker but you can get so much more precise precision with a mouse. It's crazy. All right. So well, it's a mouse game, and then you perfected a cheese method to get achievements. I didn't perfect it. But it was already uh, <laughs> it's already in there. Okay. I see what you did, but it's not <laughs> that fun. So <laughs> and I joke it was kind of like Swiss cheese full of holes. Segue. Okay, never. Mind. I got a <laughs> chuckle out of that. <laughs> Thank but you. yeah. You were talking about how this is in Game Pass and it just had touch controls. Well, we have some Game Pass news. Uh, that's not just more games. That's We'll get there in a minute. Cloud Gaming is arriving for PC and iOS with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate in spring of 2021. Yeah. So Cloud Gaming, xCloud, whatever the crap they're going to call if that if that's going to continue to be their name, you'll certainly... Coming up in the next few months, you'll finally be able to play that on your iOS devices and then on the PC. Uh, I guess that makes L would be the only one with an Apple device that can't take advantage of that spot. It's coming soon. It'll get there eventually. Yeah. Do I really need to be before too long for you? really need to be playing. And everybody else with inferior phones. What was that? Oh, do you guys use the xCloud that often? Um, I I haven't used it in a while. I used it for like for real, for real, for the first time a couple weeks ago. Um, I didn't really want to hook up my controller, so it was just whatever touch control games they had. And uh, I happened to pick up Hotshot Racing and somehow got an achievement in it. It's actually difficult with touch controls, but uh, I, I, most of that had to do with lag. The touch controls actually made sense for the game. Um, 
and, and they were different between Hyperdot and Hot Shot Racing. So when they add, when they say they add touch controls, it's more than just like a digital analog stick on the screen. In in some cases, I was just about to ask that. With Hot Shot Racing, the the right side it had it had a couple of the buttons ar- around a uh, an accelerator. So that was my accelerator, and it go it was up and down. And then the left side was like a turning, you know, your left and right. And so it actually worked well, but the, I was experiencing too much lag to really compete in it. Where it will shine is what would I mention last week? Monster Sanctuary, turn-based battling. Now, yes. platforming could be an issue, but luckily you're not doing a lot of com- you're not doing any combat in that in that mode. You have to enter the battle. And then it's just turn-based combat. You don't really, you don't have lag really, so it's going. I think it's going to vary by game, but I, I think it's best. It's best at uh, Game Pass Quest, right, Kush? I was going to say, <laughs> I have been using it most recently for Game Pass Quest. Yeah, uh, so that I don't have to download the game. Basically, you just launch it, and sometimes you just have to look at the page uh, in your XCloud app, and the achievement pops. Uh, yeah, you don't want to download. 60 gigabytes of Sea of Thieves? Well, hey, just pop up in your Oh, phone. gosh, I never want to download 60 <laughs> gigabytes. Nor do I want to launch the game, uh, you know, because then I have to do an update or I have to do whatever. And you have to sit there for 10 minutes while the thing loads. Well, if you just do that on your xCloud, it's cool. Uh, the biggest or you problem, can just get better internet. The big, Well, no, it's just it's the stupid game. It's not that. It's the game wants you to just download <laughs> a bajillion things. Um, and, you know, when you have a Series X, Kenny... Uh, <laughs> the downloads get bigger. Um, so, <laughs> so as every time I launch the XCloud app now, it it quits out like three times. So I don't know what's up with that. I don't know if it's my my Android phone is a little bit old or something. Or uh, so I'm kind of excited to check it out on PC because uh, I would assume that my PC can handle it better than my uh, my phone can. Um, I think I played something not too long ago on the phone or the xCloud. And I think it wasn't bad. I can't remember what that was now though. Um, yeah. The thing with PC is like, I, I don't see, like, Oh, I'm sitting at my computer. I don't see me using game Pass on this computer right here, mm-hmm. but I believe how they got it to work is browser based. Yes. For which iOS, means you could take something browser. like a Chromebook, mm-hmm. take it with you. And then now that would be cool. So, you know, you don't have to carry around a, P- a laptop, like a gaming laptop or uh, a console with you to like on a business trip. You just take a Chromebook and you got like a nice size screen and you're good to go. Yep. Yeah. That's where this is going to shine. Yeah. But primarily, <laughs> as you guessed, uh, I use this mostly for the weekly Game Pass quests. Um, so that yeah, I, don't I should have to look into that games. more just yeah. for that. The game that you tried this with, was it by any chance Felix the Reaper? Me? No. Uh, but I have done a bunch of quests yeah. uh, was, with it. I thought that I thought that might have been it. No. Felix I thought the Reaper you tried that. has uh, died from Game Pass. So Yeah. And my oh. thoughts, because they never fixed that unobtainable <laughs> in both versions. I felt, I felt like he, it's been a good bit since... He's talked about that, so that's why I thought Felix Reaper might have been a good guess. You know, if the app launches, it should tell me things I played recently. <laughs> if it, it doesn't does. crash, so I haven't had issues no. with the app to be honest. Uh, I actually uh, looked at it today because uh, because Haven is on there as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, like I said, that's coming in spring twenty twenty one. That's something to get excited for. Game Pass is just. It's just getting better. It's rocking and rolling. And the nice thing about that coming in spring 2021 is it will be out way before Halo Infant will ever get it, be, come out because it is no longer coming out in the spring. It is now supposedly coming out f- fall of 2021. So this thing has, <sighs> it has gotten delayed by an entire year now, <laughs> which I know Nate and Corey... You guys don't care. Oh, I, I, I don't care, but I do have care. a I do have a thought on it. I think that's good. I if they were to yeah. delay it and it released in the next three months, you kind of got to think like, well, what did you really do? Like, 
they they have a year is enough time to actually make a difference i think and if the yes. game was mostly along so i i think that's the smart play it is i, like, I just the, i really want to play the game so be, i'm sad for it that needs to aspect be but ready yes. and polished in a year they they don't really need to crack down three this thing but uh i mean which is the path they're on Wow, ain't that the freaking truth? I mean, the B, the uh, big L offense in the room is, of course, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, uh, which released after several delays, and people are still not happy with it. It's apparently a buggy mess, and people get crashes. It's unplayable. However, there's 82,000 people on TA with this game already. It just came out five days ago. Or something like that. Well, it's it's and, a uh, buggy mess. It's crashing, and then it's also beatable in like ninety hours. Apparently, I think people were expecting a. I think people were expecting more of an epic game. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, ninety hours is too short. Too. <laughs> a game that was uh, supposed to be, you know, like The Witcher Three. I think they were expecting The Witcher Three, but with lasers and flying cars and, and boobs and penises. Ninety hours of that instead of two hundred. Yeah, that that that's on them. So uh, exactly, I, I've heard CD Projekt Red. They they took what the the data that they had from The Witcher Three, and they can see when players stop playing or restart the game. And so they know that, uh, like the twenty hour mark, they lose probably the majority of players. Right. Uh, in terms of finishing the game, like to, to for me, it is way too big of a game. I now, agree. Which that, that's yeah. somebody who has not played more yes, than Witcher the Three. First, yeah two to three hours of the witcher three even though i bought the gold edition on launch um but it, it's way too big of a game and uh in, in no in no way in this day and age would i pick up a, a whatever it is 120 hour game 160 hour yeah, right game. yeah i'm in this i completely agree with that i mean i bought the Witcher 3, the complete edition or gold edition or where the crap it is where it has all the DLC years ago when it was on a super sale because it's like, oh, this is this super hyped game everyone's talking about. It's to- Once again, it's a game that would be totally up my alley, but I'm I'm, a, I'm scared to death to play it. Like, it's gonna, if I were to start that, that's going to be the only game I play for the next like six months because that's going to be how long it's going to take me to play it. And it's like, do I want to spend all that time on it? Not really. Same problem with like Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. I know it's gonna. I'm gonna put like or need to put like a hundred hours into it. So it's like, do I want to? And as far as a lot of like the bugs and people complaining, a lot of the complaints are people or coming from people like myself who still have the OG Xbox. Like, okay, now those complaints are valid. Did, did you see the PR <laughs> tweet? Uh. What 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 it, what it says? Yes. So like like they they know that there's performance <laughs> issues and they're working on them and some early next year they'll they'll have patches out and stuff like that and like they're saying go get a refund if if you know if you're if you're not satisfied. They had they 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 knew that this was not working uh, very well and what they did was they limited uh, what they showed to reviewers. Uh, they showed very segmented piece of the game and they told them that they couldn't talk about uh parts you know with the majority of the game so like they were holding back information yeah in regards to performance and and how (laughs) this was yeah so at, at that point or with that point i do agree like you purposely released a buggy mess you've released a product that is unplayable that's on you that's not right you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have done that if you bought it and you only had the og xbox one you absolutely should be able to get a full refund because that's not what you played for but if this was like the kind of thing where the older consoles just weren't playing it as well like <laughs> of course they're not playing it as well like my VCR Xbox is seven years old. It's got thousands of hours on it. Like, it's not going to play it well. It was underpowered when it released. <laughs> and now it's trying to play 
a nearly a next gen game. Like it's just it's not going to do well. But yeah, if if any company releases a game that they know is unfinished, that that's wrong. It's one thing to have bugs, but to release something that is unplayable, there's no excuse for that. Because there are still millions issues? of people who have like OG Xboxes or One S's or something like that. Is the One X having issues too with it? The One e- X is every, running fine. Well, I mean, there's glitches around, there, but I, I think the game breaking and the performance breaking stuff is on older consoles mostly. Yes, okay. I need base like you model, can play the game PS4 on, or on Series X and Xbox. PS5, but you're still going to encounter uh, little glitches here and there. Especially if you are a male, like your donger will just hang out of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen those pictures. That's hilarious. <laughs> Gross, dude. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, while bugs are annoying, it is what it is. Like Skyrim, Fallout, these massive um, open world games. I'm not mad at the fact that there's some bugs or or some weird wonky gravity or something like that happens because developers can only play tests but so much and when you have these monstrous worlds you can only do but so much you don't hear grand but theft auto 5 and stuff, red dead redemption 2 coming out game with breaking stuff. yeah like a, that's not I, there was problems of uh red dead redemption 2 but like game breaking stuff there's no I mean, excuse bugs yeah i can pass. I, I can get i can allow some of it Yeah, we were. I love that Halo Infinite turned into, <laughs> into Cyberpunk twenty. Anything to not talk about Halo. Oh my Pretty goodness! Much. It's like Nate's <laughs> trying to lead this. Uh, so the the bottom line is that Halo Infinite can delay as much as it wants. Just come out and be good. Just be good. Yeah. That's all I want. Yeah. Just be good. Yeah. Possibly and let's even be playable. Honest, Halo Infinite needs to be a home run. It really does. Mm-hmm. And it, it Halo Infinite needs to be a 10 out of 10 must play game because this is the flagship uh the flagship exclusive for Xbox. Xbox has not had any games in the past 7 years. This needs to be phenomenal or it's just going to look like another failure in the Xbox lineup of and Xbox has no good games. So, if it has to delay it a year for it to be good, it has to delay it for a year to be good. I'm just not happy with it. I want my Halo. Yeah, you got 16 Gears games to catch up on in the meantime. You're not wrong. The good thing is the Gears games as of right now are all cheap, just like these games that Nate's going to tell you about. Oh, oh. my God. What do we call I'm that? Not say. Uh, um, that's right, wheeling really and dealing. Um, so, right. <laughs> I would like to talk about Masters of Anima. It's one ninety nine yeah. down from 10 It is a strategy real time. Uh, it is. I think I might have mentioned this before, uh, but it is a I little bit like did. it's a little bit like Pikmin. Uh, it has a walkthrough. It's fifteen to twenty hours. I, I enjoyed the brief time I spent with it. I would like to go back, but I get distracted easily. Speaking of which, uh, another game I'd like to talk about is Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom. It's fourteen dollars oh, down from forty. He, he this cracked rarely himself up goes on, on sale. <laughs> um, it is a Vayner, uh, Metroid Vayner. And it is also a platformer, uh, and it runs about 20 to 25 hours. Um, I've been told that this game is fantastic, and uh, if you are interested in it in any way, I would can pay a lot of attention to it this week. Like I said, very rarely goes on this deep of a sale. Uh, and the last Vayner I want to talk about is The Aquatic Adventure of the Last Human, which just reminds me of Steve Zissou. Um, it is $3.74 down time. from 15 it is also a Vayner, like I said, and it has a walkthrough. Um, and I don't think it takes that much time, if I'm remembering correctly. I haven't beaten it yet. I got yeah. There's, once there's not a lot of not a lot of people who have gotten very far in that. Yeah, one. I think people just don't want to play it. Um, it's yeah. not the most fun game ever. It's not horrible, but it's not the most fun game. Uh, but if you are trying to, I don't know, get gamer score in what metroid vayner uh metroid vayner sometime next year maybe this is something you want to pick up and have ready all right um well for me i have nothing nothing really caught my eye uh it's a good game l i mean i got nothing. are you gonna recommend anything okay he's got nothing too so that leaves Corey. what oh 
Well, that leaves me to pick up the other Vayner in the list. Um, I've mentioned it before. It goes on sale kind of often um, at this price, but Omega Strike is currently three dollars uh this week uh i know i've mentioned it before it's like eight to ten hour game if you're looking to get into metroidvania it's not a bad one it's it's not the the best but it's it's not the worst um so omega strike uh if, if you've missed it out maybe you're listening to this late put a price tracker on it like i said it goes on sale for this cheap all the time uh the other one i want to mention is trials rising uh, the gold edition, it is $9 and, uh, that gets you the expansion pass. And, uh, I think another kind of DLC, uh, that is $6 by itself. Uh, the trials games are really good, really fun. Uh, I enjoy them and you can't beat $9 for this. I, I'm pretty sure I paid 40 for it when it launched. So get it. All right. Well, speaking of getting stuff when it segment, launched. <laughs> I was. I just noticed the Borderlands Three season pass is on sale. Is that a good price? Thirty dollars. But then I think there's a uh, second uh, DLC. I mean, yeah, 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 that's not going to get you everything. Um, so forty percent off. There's already a DLC for the season pass two that is out has achievements. So this won't get you everything, but the content in it is worth that price. Yeah. I've seen the base game as low as like ten bucks during the holidays. But I guess this is where they get you. Yeah, the base game is super cheap. I'm pretty sure you could have got the digital deluxe like Black Friday for maybe thirty bucks, which um, gets you all this anyway. So uh, I mean, it's not the the best deal that's ever been on all that content, but it's a decent deal on the content if you already own the game. Now, Prue was telling us um, on Thursday that it's kind of a buggy mess, like you've been crashing a lot, or he's been crashing a lot. What's going on with that? Uh, we all <coughs> crash a lot in that really? game. That's no good. It's a buggy mess. It's unacceptable. Well, never mind. Yeah, play, play a good big franchise. T- I don't, it really is unacceptable. Oh, uh, Nate, Fairy's on sale. Oh, finally. <laughs> I should have set a price tracker. <laughs> it's a good game. All right, yeah, so back to the uh, cheap bastard spot. Games of Gold, two games that are now available. Bleed 2. Uh, and also stacking for the 360. You can pick them up. Uh, Bleed 2 will be over January 15th, and stacking you have till the 31st to get that. So make sure you quickly go download that, then uninstall it, because you don't actually need that in your backlog. I mean, stacking is a very good game, but I imagine anyone who was going to play it at this point probably has. Um, You definitely want to play that game with a guide. And there's also some DLC with it as well, but hopefully that'll go on sale too. Sure. Uh, a couple of games with Game Pass that are coming soon. Killer Queen Black. I feel like we mentioned that last week. That's coming to the console. Uh, Cyber Shadow. Hey, Corey, do you know what band performed Killer Queen? Yeah. <laughs> Cyber Shadow. Both both of those are really good games. Cyber Shadow wow. being the one Wake that up, was made by the same people who made Shovel Knight. Yeah, Yacht Club Games. Shovel. Where? And this is kind of like their spin on, I believe, Ninja Gaiden. Uh, so yeah, it was, looks like the messenger. Well, yeah, it, it's going to look like the messenger because the messenger was also based off an Ninja Gaiden. So, I don't believe you. Well, I, I've never, play, I never played Ninja Gaiden, but I guess so. Ninja we'll Gaiden see. was amazing. Did it have a boss that had like two hands? <laughs> yes, uh, some of the bosses had two hands. That is correct. It, that, that, that like pound down on the ground <laughs> like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I honestly I don't remember any of the bosses um, because there's a screenshot and Cyber Shadow has it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no Messenger had it. Well, you know, they they borrow from the greats, I guess. All right. <laughs> uh, you were about to tell us about the medium, I believe. Yeah, no, I yeah. got distracted by the screenshot that Corey just sent. Uh, but yeah, the medium coming to console and PC. Um. And then a bunch of Yakuza titles are coming to the console PC, which are Yakuza 3 Remastered, Yakuza 4 Remastered, Yakuza 5 Remastered, Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. Has anyone on the panel ever in your life played a Yakuza game? No. Negative. Yeah, okay. See, no. I feel like I want to play one. I'm sure they're very good. Yeah. Just knowing that there's so many of them kind of turns <sighs> me off. That's a dumb thing, but... 
the the newest one, sure, like a dragon, like actually a dragon. interests me. I have not looked into the other ones, <laughs> but I've I've only heard good things. I hear like they are hour games bonkers. Yeah. Um, what's his face? Uh, my favorite guy, Dino Bull. He suggested he he said I should play one, and I should start out with I think zero or something like that. I don't know. There's a there's like a baby or something. Um, I don't know. I I I told him I might entertain that idea. So. I, and then a Yakuza might be in my future. Yeah, I think next year I'll I'll play one. So I think it, it might have been zero, but I'm thinking like a dragon is a good jumping in point if you haven't played them all. Because Al, like you were saying, I I feel the same way. Like I always want to jump into a series and play it from the beginning. I don't want to just pick up halfway through and miss whatever references that might be in the newer ones. But I believe it's like a dragon is a good jumping in point. Yeah, if but you that's haven't played any of the pass, older ones, so I'm not <laughs> spending sixty bucks on a, a a game that is like Kingdom Hearts in its cutscenes. Or so I hear. Right. Um, but yeah, all that's coming soon. But stuff that has been added, brand new, it, huh? Brand new stuff. World premiere, baby. Yes, Markrid. For the Mark Android Ed. Markhead, oh, okay, Markhead. Sure. They game. like the Swedish chef. Mork, Mork, Mork. It's been added to Android console and PC. Uh, Skyrim, because of course it is, is on console or is on Android and console. Should I play that? Is my first Elder Scrolls? No, you have to uh, start of one. We just talked about this. <laughs> don't you yell like Goose Fra Bra or something? Fushroda. Not what Anger Management taught me, but okay. If the, if you want to jump into an Elder Scroll, yeah, it's probably your best one to to jump into. Like, how Do many it. hours am I looking at? Nice. <laughs> that depends. So when it says Android, Are that means gonna... it's um, it's a cloud thing. What? How long have we been doing this podcast? <laughs> I don't know. I'm if Apple we say dummy. Android, it means X Cloud. Yeah. So <laughs> who the hell would want to play that crap on their phone? That's silly. Um. Besides you, who Can wants I get to play it on Switch? But it probably sells really well there too. At least it's it on sells TV. really well everywhere. All right. Anyways, continue. Ta- I'm not, we're not going to spend any more time. Elder Scrolls Skyrim now on Game Pass. Yes. Um, Wilmot's Warehouse is on console and PC. Neo Neo da, 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 da. Neoverse is on Android and console. My friend. Oh, okay. Never mind. I just read that wrong. My friend Pedro is on Android. Now, let me stop you right there. Wait, quick. was it that already there? <laughs> My friend Pedro has a Win 10 stack and an Xbox stack. They're both on Game Pass. And I was afraid that they're going to leave Game Pass soon. But this kind of gives me confidence that it's going to stick around. Wait, would, would you reaffirm me, Goosh? Ooh. I mean, like, why would they put it on just xCloud? Or like make, right. make it in their post about it? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't trust them. I just don't trust them. <laughs> it's, it's one of those games that like I need to finish. Yeah, like, didn't um, uh, like I need to go back and do the S levels and stuff like like the S ranks, but I haven't yet. I think and you I know won't... if they if they yeah. give me two weeks, it's not it's not going to go well. I think you won't be upset if you do it now. <laughs> I think yeah, you will no. be upset if you wait. Didn't the um, like Game Pass? I missed out on Goose Game. I missed out on it. Didn't the Game Pass Whisperer uh, Freem tell us that it's been there for a year now? It's going to be going soon. I think I seem to remember him mentioning that this is one that he done. thinks is going to go soon. Yeah. It, it's yeah. a good candidate. I'm going to throw it to Frame uh, in Discord and see what he <laughs> thinks. But continuing on, MotoGP20 is also on Android and console and PC. Monster Train, that's on console. I believe that's a card game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Dark Pictures Anthology, Man of Medan. This is a, uh, a very highly rated game. It is now coming to PC Game Pass. Code Vein. Android and console, Beholder Complete Edition, Android and console, and Jumroll, please. I'll let Kenny do this. What did he take his? What's he doing? I don't know. He's fixing his off. hair. I think his hair yeah. needs some conditioning. He, he just peaced out from the podcast on yeah. probably his most hyped moment. Yeah, Kenny, that is so okay. sus. That is so sus. Anyways, Among Us is now in Xbox Game Pass PC. Um, you might be thinking, hey, that's a free game. Well, it's free on mobile, has ads. You can pay five bucks, I think, to uh, get the non-ad, non- the non-ad version. Of course, if you play with a host that 
is on PC who paid for it. You don't get ads. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a community game that will be happening soon. I was, sh- I'm sure. No achievements, uh, so don't expect those. But it's still a fun game, and uh, yeah. Uh, going away for Game Pass, we do have a few that are leaving December 30th. Farming Simulator 17, no. console and PC, Football Manager 2020 on the PC. Nobody cares about that. And Mortal Kombat X on the console. Uh, I'm I'm uh, deciding if I should do that thing tonight. You know the thing. For a game leaving game pass, thing. the thing December, that's marked out the December fifteenth. Talking, talking about untitled goose game? No, um, no, not that one. The other thing that's leaving tonight. The thing that mm. I don't want to do, but I kind of want to do it. No, the thing for G task purposes. I don't course. know what that is. Taxes. I don't know what you're know. talking. Hey, yeah. Uh, yes, you do. You guys are pathological liars. Oh yeah, you definitely want to do that. <laughs> if you do, I'm just gonna call you hypocrite. <laughs> you call me a hypocrite so anyway. It. That that is true. See, it w- it would just be for G task purposes and nothing else. It's a quick 400 TAD, man. But that's got to be the PC version only. That's going to take 40 years to download. Can we talk about the 12 days of Christmas? If you can make it about 12 seconds for each right. day, go for it. 12 seconds because it is over. It's not over. You finished it's it. Over. I didn't finish it. We're on we're on day 15. We're on it's December 15th as of recording. All right. Well, one thing I've been working on is the 12 days of Christmas. I am definitely behind. Since last week, I've only done days 7, 8, and 9. Uh, 7 was the missable achievements. And like I promised you last week, Corey, I did uh, Trooper Brook, which luckily has Thanks a bunch of achievements promise. early on. They're mostly just dialogue trees that you need to go through, similar to Grim Fandango. So that was easy. Uh, so far, I think Trooper Brook is okay. It's a little slow paced, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm look forward to getting back to it uh, for day no! eight. Oh, sorry, breaking news: Super Uh-oh. Meat Boy Forever is apparently coming to Nintendo Switch and Epic on December 23rd, but Xbox is very early 2021, <laughs> and now my year's rip even more so. 2020, 2020 strikes again. Gosh. Oh, okay. All right, continue, well. Trooper Brook. Uh, Trooper Brook is married to Trooper Kenny. All right, so... Again. So dumb. <laughs> oh, yeah, walkthroughs. Um, for day eight, I used Hexalogic, which I hadn't used yet. Actually, we're playing that legit, my wife and I. Kind of interesting. Doubt. Yeah. She would get mad if I tried to use a guy for a puzzle game, so I didn't. Uh, so I got five from there and then three from Minecraft Dungeons. I forgot to mention earlier, there's something I saw in an, um, in in another Discord today that uh, apparently if one person has the DLC, that's all you need and that person can host and uh, anyone can play it. So that might be something your group might want to look into. Hold on, hold on. Back that up. How can we be cheapskates with Minecraft Dungeons? <laughs> one person buys it. So one person. All right, Prue owns the DLC already. All right, so it's worth trying. So you're saying he can host the game, and he, we can yeah. play the DLC for free and get achievements. Yeah, you see that perked uh, you up a layer. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. When I can save thirty bucks. <laughs> I mean, if you each get I'll one DLC that. each, or we'll see how many come out. It might be a way to go. Uh, yeah. Interesting. And then. Uh, Day nine was nine ladies spelling. I used um, the M. I started Mushroom Savior. <sighs> I thought only these Zitalon games had the uh, title updates. Apparently, this guy did too. Not not at the end of the year yet. Which game? Uh, Mushroom Savior. Is that the sequel yeah. to Mushroom Quest? That's from uh, Flying Islands team. It basically started right. this because uh, it's an easy one to two hour puzzler. You can use a video guide if you're Corey or a text guide if you're me. And there's a quick 300 TAD for stuff that you're going to get normally. But for. You play games for fun, not for achievements. For the rest of Mistletoe, I used Minecraft 10 exclusively. So that was perfect. I needed some D-Test points. I haven't exhausted Minecraft stuff yet. 
So yeah, that was uh, my eight days. I know some of you are a little more ahead. Anyone do anything? Yeah, I'm done. You're done? <laughs> I did all my days. What did you use for the linking thing? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Well, uh, I have just did random achievements uh, as I was popping Minecraft for G-Task. And about the third letter, third or fourth, I hit an S that I needed. And you know what achievements start and end with S? A mm. lot of them in the PCA Neo Geo that say score mm -hmm. such points. and such points. Oh, smart. So I did <laughs> three different ACA games to build that sucker right up. Don't ask me which ones. I don't remember. There was a fighting one in the mix. Well, that's there all of them. Ooh, a fighting one. Okay. No, no, no. There was a platformer, and there was a racing game I did. I actually did three different genres in ACA games. Yeah, I'm not that far. Uh, <clears throat> I'm actually right on the threshold of doing that one. Uh, for day seven, uh, don't you miss these? I used uh, Planet Rix 13. Uh, that game. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> luckily, that, <laughs> luckily, since I had just started that, uh, those seven achievements were then met with five achievements in the next challenge, which was for a, uh, a walkthrough. Uh, and then I switched to jump, turn, turn. I'm also known as jump, step, step. If you're trying to look it up somewhere else, uh, day nine, it was random, whatever day 10. I used bedlam, as I mentioned earlier, because that was for 10 calling duties for first person shooters, uh, challenge 11, 11 riders moving. I used the free to games with gold toy box turbos and i only have a few achievements left in that game uh to clean up and that'll all be over and then i have no idea what to do for link frog i feel like i want to come up with a phrase there's no way i ever want to play an aca game um so i don't think i'm gonna do that i do respect your trick i think that's very clever i don't think i want to do that uh i want to spell something and i don't want to do what waka is doing i want to do something else uh, so I'm thinking about that. Did you guys see what Retro Chief did? Yes, I thought that was clever as well. Yeah, but that probably hurt your brain looking at all those Roman numerals. What he did was he took well, a I just sinker. Those letters, yeah. He took sinker and did. Apparently, all the achievements are Roman numerals. So you have I, 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 V, V, and then V, I. You get six there, and you load up sinker two, and he did the same thing, starting with one and going through six. So. It looks really cool when well, you showed a picture of it. That was pretty clever, too. I will probably go the random game strategy that Corey employed. I feel like I'm probably going to end up doing that, too, unless I can. It's just going to be too much work to uh, to map it out otherwise. So I might have to do something. Ain't nobody got time for that. Might have to see if there is. Because I don't want to play ACAs. So maybe I will just do the same thing you're doing and find games that start and end with S. Uh, um, if, if, you, if you haven't done it yet, day 12, you have to start it. Yeah, you have to push so, the button. Yep. Yeah, be be aware of that. You do have to push the button. Yes. And there's no reset that that I know of. So if you get caught with a Z or an X at the end, well. Yeah, good luck. Tough. Nuggies. Contest. What did you use Cart for uh, yeah. shooters and vehicles? Because I need some help thinking of stuff. Shooters and vehicles? Day 10 with shooters. Yeah, day 10 oh. day 11. <laughs> Uh, so that 10 calling duties, right? Um, I yes. mo almost all Duty. of that came from Hitman Two. Shout outs to my buddy Koosh Moose. He played with games with me and uh, got me some of the upcoming nice. discontinued. And I was gonna get the tenth one in it, but the Hitman Two servers are really bad. So apparently, I need to get on any achievements that rely on those servers, such as these contracts, custom contracts. Um, it just it kept disconnecting so i had to do super hot real really 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 real quick and what was the other one the vehicle one day yeah. 11 uh aca geo aca neo geo <laughs> over top oh boy it's you i think I've almost all of that um i would have got everything in that one as well but you actually have to beat the race in order to register your score and guess who can't beat the race Mm. So I uh, I started up Coffin Dodgers really quick just to get two two quick ones. Now let's back just bust up uh -oh. the Hitman two real quick. Uh -oh. You're saying mm -hmm. that there's other things that are going to be gone. I don't know if they're going to be discontinued, but like you have to complete a custom, you have to complete a featured contract, and you have to complete the content the contract creation tutorial mm. in order to do the contract creation. And I would assume anything 
that pertains to contracts, mm-hmm. which you have to complete 10 of them, you have to be connected to their server. Huh. If you're disconnected, like it cuts me off with the tutorial that I'm creating. Uh, I can't find any of them. And so I got tried that for like a good 20 minutes. That's interesting. Killing the game, coming back, and it was just not staying connected or would not connect at all in some cases. Because so I'm a little I've scared about that. Nothing about that yet. So that is interesting. And I will have to look into that. It, it, it seems to be very flaky. So I, I would definitely, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to hit that up again here soon and uh, maybe knock them out. Not that I plan on completing the game, but. Right, but it seems know, to be easy pickings. Get what you what you can while you can. Yeah. Yep. Oh, what I was gonna say, Corey, is um I remember having some trouble with the uh, completing the raids in Overtop as well. You to there's shortcuts you need to go through and find all the shortcuts. So maybe watch a video. I think I watched a video and it shows you all the shortcuts and then you can do it. Yeah, I assume that was probably that's, the case. And that's I, what I have it is because you run out of time, but, right? You're not yeah, actually losing, you're just running out of time. Right, right. Yeah, I saw Chewy and Ice used my uh, my recommendation from last week doing concept destruction. It's a nice, easy one to do for a vehicle week. Nate, did you do that one yet? Vehicle week, yeah. I mentioned that I used the the games with gold um, toy box, toy box turbos. Yeah. Did you say that? Okay. It was relatively okay. easy. There's two online achievements uh, for that. I did one of them. The other, you have to meet up with a real person online, and I'll just go to the other room to do that. <laughs> uh, so yeah <laughs> you were a pleasure to play with well, thank, you. Too, so. thank you thank you i i did those with randoms and i didn't want you to have to go through that especially this I, late I appreciate it very this much. late in the shutdown so and i already had it installed so it was it was nothing nothing but a but a thing nothing but a tip of the hat <laughs> yeah. if you need toy box turbo help you know where to call I, I literally mm. think I just have to go to the next room and fire up a second controller, and yeah, then I'll be done. Pretty easy. Yeah, <laughs> come on, Nate. All right, G task time. Yeah. All right. Yes, let's continue on. Woo! Corey give, All right, or Corey, give the losers their shoutouts. Yep, time to pay homage. On the individual side, we have lost Ella Fillette seventy seven, Northern Lass, ZZ Urban Spaceman, Crunchy Goblin sixty eight, Fluttery Chicken, Matt Cam O nine, and Fight Club. They are all out of the individual, and on the team side, we have lost the not-so-serious, serious team of the community. This was Mad Lefty's <coughs> team. We also lost the Great Allies. This is Sour Revivalist's team. Achievements Go Burr. This had Crazy Catman, Matt Cam, and Retro Chief all in that one. And then our big community team of the week, all four members are from the community that would be Mark put the jester's hat on the 77 elephants. And obviously, that is the team of Pat 90, <laughs> Mark B, XLAX Jester, and Ella Follette 77. Good team name. Uh, yeah, excellent oh. team names uh, on those. What are the... Um, uh, that, of course, wouldn't be a G-Task roundup without the bonuses. Yeah. This week's bonus in the solo side is in the period in the top 25%. So you're going to have to be pretty good on that one. And the team one really sucks. You have to double the true achievement score from the last period. Um, I'm pre- We used two bonuses last week, and we were pretty close to the cutoff i'm i'm fairly positive and if we are to double our ta we have to get like fifty four thousand. Uh, i don't think we're gonna go mm-hmm. this week. yeah i think this week's gonna be the swan song for many it's, it's gonna be a bloodbath it, it it's getting to that exhaustion point yeah sure. it's getting a little much we actually didn't use a bonus this week after using last week we did a lot of minecraft didn't realize that I Minecraft, noticed. I didn't realize, saw you guys doing that. We didn't realize that Minecraft 360 had a uh, such easy boostable multiplayer, and it just so happened that all four of us didn't have that done yet. So we were able to get some of that done, but that's going to be a dry well pretty soon. But Minecraft is always Reminds good. Me. Yeah, the Xbox One version has probably the same multiplayer. I don't think so. Should look into that. Unless it's was a new update. No, it definitely does. I, oh, yeah? I think I have it left to do. Oh, uh, it has to be the Xbox One edition, though. Wait, wait. 
I did the multiplayer on one of these, and it's not the 360 version. Yeah, there was just some snowballs. Oh, sure. You had to throw snowballs and stuff like that. And Yeah, yeah, it is on that one. Yeah, it's in one of the content updates. You got to open all the chests in the battle game and do the snowball thing and <clears> throat> win throat> public matches. Looks like I finally did that with yeah, four we, controllers, apparently. We had issues. Like we kept so, spawning and it, falling it, around the lava. Kind of sucked. Yeah. Wasn't that fun. So, well, yeah, good job. Right. Task. Oh, but, but, we made the top 69. So there's something to be said for <laughs> Top 69 teams. Yeah. Noise. All right, Nate. Give us a, de- give us a gamer tag challenge roundup. It's the middle of the month, so nothing has changed. We are still spelling <laughs> oh, okay. Wheezy Fuzz on the wild card game. Is Graveyard Keeper. That's any uh, achievement or a completion uh, or a previous completion in that game. Uh, the bonus is nobody makes me bleed my own blood. And that is achievements with the words heart or blood anywhere in the title. Uh, have fun with that. All right. Well, then that takes us to Brag Camp. Corey, kick Ooh, okay. it off. Here we go. Completions. Mad Lefty, I mentioned previously, has completed 200 games. Skeptical Mario is at 250 games. Mike Pitch, he hit a, uh, a double milestone, so you'll be hearing him again, but he hit 500 completed games. GG Mike. And uh, it happened to be on a uh, Connect Labs game. Uh, I can't remember which one it is at this moment, but um, yeah, good job to Mike Pitch. Rail Bait. He completed 700 games. Um, that does not include his newest completion of Cyberpunk. He was the fifth person on the site to do that. So GG to Relby. Nice. Yeah, that's a big one. Uh, a super hyped game. Prue, 800 completed games in Enigmo, Enigo Montoya, 80. 1,050 completed games. Go watch Princess Bride, please. <laughs> yes, please. Is that, is that like it's Enigo Montoya. We've talked about okay. it a thousand times. I can't say it, and yes, it is. Well, Freedom Girl 85 has reached a completion percentage milestone of 52%. Uh, Matism's at 56%. Saucy Slingo at 59%. I'm going to need you to raise that at 10%, buddy. Uh, Wakapel's at 78%. Skeptical Mario, 84%. Ben L72, 89%. And Sir Polygon is at 91% completion percentage. We still have no one playing difficult games, so we have no ratios to talk about. In streaks, we have Mark B on a 50-day achievement, achievement win streak. And for some reason, Fufu loves to do this. Mark B <laughs> is currently on a 51-day achievement win streak, which is a new personal best. Dunkos is currently also on a 50-day achievement win streak. I think he's done it before. Quick Don't Die is currently on a 100-day achievement win streak, as is Northern Lass. El Sock is at 150 days. And the Alpha Seagull is currently at, at 200 days. Topping that off, Dan's Pacific's is on a 250-day win streak. Uncle Unky... Mm, I almost... Mm, I almost did a no-no. Unky Tim Fu is currently on a 1,500-day achievement win streak. And Plantain 42 is on a 2,700-day achievement win streak. Hat 90 has won 7,000 achievements. Skeptical Mario, 12,000 achievements. Frame Hole, 13,000. High Road Vatu, 15,000. Dan Pacifics is 17,000. Dunkos also got 17,000. Vulgar Latin has reached 23,000 achievements. One, Mental Knight 5, 27,000. Prue has reached 28,000. And that guy's name from the Princess Bride has reached 31,000 achievements. One. Yeah, he's getting milestones every week just from doing Leapfrog. Gamer score, It's Alive X has a hundred. Thousand, good job to the other Alex. El Sac, two hundred fifty thousand. Skeptical Mario, three hundred thousand. Chesno, three hundred thousand. Jables, otherwise known, of course, as Mister Jables. Goodness, three hundred fifty thousand. Mister Pitart has three hundred fifty thousand as well. Mike Pitch, who I looked up, um. He got 500,000 gamer score at the same time as his 500 completions using Connect Fun Lab's 5 Micro Lab Challenge. I don't know if he picked this game Absolutely. for any other reason than to get those two milestones at the same time and lined it up. Uh, the achievement, if you, if you are there, 
I believe the achievement he got it with was called completionist or something like that. Yeah, but I don't think he's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be a completionist. All right, he's got 75%. That's not bad. Northern last 550,000 gamer score. What? No, don't continue. Don't worry. Triple Triad 777 has reached a new milestone of 900,000 gamer score. <laughs> NTA score, Philip Wendell has 550,000. Freaky Row has 650,000. Ben L72 has 750,000. Ice Fire Timmy, 850,000. All right, pay attention to this name, Corey. Oz, Oz Buffanatic, 850,000. And pay attention to this name, too. Rocker Dude, 5012, mm. 850,000. Nicely done, sir. MDP, 900,000. ZZ Urban Spaceman, thank you, sir, has 950,000. Raw Sauce Ross. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> that a Jim Ross reference? He likes that barbecue sauce. 1.1 1. 1 million TA score. Lego sauce Boss. Lego Head, 1977, 1. 1.25 million. And Inigo Montoya, 1.7 million TA score. In the leaderboards. We have some real good ones this week. What the Fug is in the top 2,000 of the TA leaderboard for Rogue Light. The Alpha Seagulls in the top 200 of the New York TA leaderboard for Point and Click already. Wow. Uh, Skeptical Mario is in the top 20 of the TA Difference leaderboard for Platformer. AZ Mongoose is now in the top 10 of the Arizona Gamer Score leaderboard for Vehicular Combat. Gotta love it. High Road V2 is in the top 200 of the TA leaderboard for Sports. NBA Kirkland is in the top 50 of the Gamer Score leaderboard for Connect Required. And Mental Knight 5 is our leaderboard MVP this week. He's in the top 200 of the TA leaderboard for Action and Education and Trivia, top 500 in Sports, and top 100 of the USA TA leaderboard overall. Pretty impressive, sir. He's just going off. He's been going crazy in the uh, Chewy's CC Backlog Blitz, in which the fine gentleman in... Uh, the UK sang a song. That was a fantastic. It was it was a thing that they did. That was great. Freaky Row did a great job. Chewy is a good guy. Oh, speaking of Chewy, he had a birthday December 9th, which was right on the precipice of us recording last week, so it wasn't mentioned, but sorry about that, bud. Happy birthday. And... Happy birthday. Oh, and I forgot to mention before. Belated. That uh, Final Fantasy VIII was my 1,000th started game. I don't know whether to be happy or sad about that. A little of both. Probably both. I think I'm going to not put so many games on the tag and try to finish what's on there, which I think everyone always says every year, and uh, yeah, it's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. Never going to happen. But if you want your milestones read aloud on the podcast be sure to friend the ta profile ah101 hashtag 4639 because some dingus won't give us the ah101 account make uh, sure you friend the right no, one it's, it's all ours now. we'll add you to the Foo -foo. list it's all ours that now, Foo -foo. there's no more confusion it's all uh, ours. there is definitely confusion oh still yes I thought that guy was gone now. He came back. He did? Oh. Like a nasty, nasty wart. I did not know that. Oh, so no doubt. So every, okay. everybody is Never confused. I'm going to have to take not care to of that. Not to be confusing is that it is late and it is time for us to get out of here. So with that, if you want to get in, get a hold of us, you can send us a Twitter tweet on the Twitter at Achievements101. Check us out on Discord, discord.io slash h101. Jump into the Twitch. Give us a follow. Give us a sub. Twitch.tv slash h101. Corey's going to be streaming a game come Thursday night. Oh, boy. Yep. He sounds so, super pumped for this one. Yep. You're probably going to want to check the YouTubes uh, if you missed out because uh, that, that'd be the day the podcast drops, but uh, Calico comes out. You remember Calico, Kenny? The cat game. Uh, it, it's it is a cat game. It's uh, it's a little bit more than uh, a cat game. 
It, it is. It's cats on cats on cats. Oh boy, it's a village <laughs> simulation game uh, <laughs> where you play. I guess I guess you play as Calico. Uh, it, it says Calico is a day in the life community sim game where you are given important slash adorable tasks of rebuilding the town's cat cafe and packing it with cute and cuddly creatures. That's Spoiler a lot of C words. Yeah, there's lots of cats. It's very cute. Um, I think I'm going, you know, how I, I got, so for those who've been to the, my stream before, I have these fun little commands in chat. Stuff happens on the stream. I think if I have time, I'm going to add a, a, a cat related command hmm. for <laughs> this for this game. Maybe a little meow. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you work on that right meow or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm too tired to do cat puns. Right. <laughs> I don't know why that one was perfect. I'm tails down. Uh, it's kitten around. It's two kittens out on the town. <sighs> Anyways, yes, I'm, I'm going to be playing okay. uh, for some length of time. And then Volker will be having our community play day for um, Rocket League, dude. Tic Tac Toe. Yes, freaking Rocket yes, League. Yes, that'll be Rocket League. Thank you, L. You're welcome. You were not around, Kenny, before, but I was telling the listeners, Among Us Community Day is definitely going to be happening soon. It's going to be on Absolutely. the Switch. On Game Pass PC, you have no excuse. It's on Switch, too. Yeah. Game and Pass it's free PC, on mobile. Yeah. Yeah, and it'll be free. On, it's already free on mobile. Yeah, a Community Day with Among Us will be amazing. Uh, yeah, that's Friday, and then Saturday, he's going to be streaming. He's going to be continuing with Final Fantasy VII. And then Sunday night, I will be streaming something. I haven't decided yet, but I will be streaming something. So, like I said, check it out on Twitch, that TV slash AH101. And last but definitely not least, if you could give us, uh, if you can support us, with your monies, patreon.com slash achievement hunting 101. We would greatly appreciate the support. And with that, class is dismissed. See you all next week. Bye bye. Later, people. Hope you enjoy your December. Hi there. It's me, your friendly neighborhood Wookiee, Chewy on Ice. And for once, I'm not here to talk to you about the CCC. No. Instead, I'm going to be talking to you about the FCC, by which I of course mean Freemholes Completion Challenge, which is a year-long challenge set by the original Challenge Wonderkind of our little community, Freemhole. I've been personally doing the FCC for the last couple of years and really, really enjoying it, and I'm looking forward to partaking again in 2021. And the vigilant amongst you have probably noticed that Freem himself posted his challenge for next year in the Discord recently. So I figured it was an opportune time to talk about it on this very podcast, to share with you some stories about this year's challenge and build some hype for next year. And who better to talk about it with me than the genius behind it himself, Mr. Freemhole. Freem, welcome and thank you for joining me. Thank you, Mr. Baca, or, or can I call you Chewy? Ooh, I, I, I do like this. Mr. Baca has a ring to it. I like that. Mr. Baca, it's, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to be have an opportunity to talk to you. The, the time zone uh, typically doesn't work out in our favor, but, you know, with, uh, with 2020 as it is, things, uh, things are a little weird. So here we are. Yeah, our it's our the twilight universes zone. have collided. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're living in the twilight zone. I mean, I think Kashik is on plus 72 hours, so I think I may be, what, three days ahead of you at the moment? Well, and wasn't it Saturn and Jupiter kind of line up recently? So that probably really helps out the communication lines. Yeah, and I think we've actually only got 20 minutes uh, before the second moon uh, cuts us off, so we should probably get started. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, let's talk about just introducing the challenge. For anyone who doesn't know what the FCC is, please could you give us a little overview? 
Absolutely. You know, this is one of those things I've always kind of fancied myself a completionist and not so much in terms of, you know, having to go for absolutely everything, but I prefer to to complete my games. You know, a game to me is when the when the developers put an achievement list together, that is kind of their roadmap to say, hey, if you do all these things, there's a good chance you've hit everything we wanted you to do. And so I take that as a, a nice model for getting games off my tag. And so what I like to do, and it, it all involves randomness and, and fun for everybody, because I'm not a I'm not a big scorer. I just can't do that type type of stuff. And that my gaming time doesn't work that way. So I came up with these random challenges. And I used to do these with individual achievements. And I thought, you know, my focus and this this started in 2016, let's really look at at, at doing games this way. And so in 2016 I, I came out with the very first list um, I put 36 categories in 2016 together and went through the whole thing. I failed miserably on that list. It was terrible. But I've done it since 2016, and I kind of shortened it up to 30, 30 uh, categories each year. And so this, we just are uh, getting ready to start year six here in 2021. Uh, you'll notice that one of the categories is Zombies 6 because I'm a bit of a zombophile, so they tend to make their way into each one of my lists. Um, and so the first time here in 2020, though, was when I decided, you know, let's blow this thing up a little bit. We, we have the categories. Those are great. There's 30 of them. But you know what else we should do is see if we can't add some other flavor in here and, and increase the complexity a little bit. So I added three additional challenges to this year, uh, this year being 2020, uh, and see where people come. And, and it was it was fun. It was successful. I really enjoy it. And so I came back, did it again in 2021, like you mentioned. Um, I, I, I will admit, I'm 17 categories into 2022 already. I like to get these lists done early, so there's no setting up for me to cheat. Um, you know, I, I hope to get 2022's list done by like March, but that's way ahead. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about Challenge 2020. Um, how how'd you end up doing this year? Uh, yeah, so I actually did uh, pretty damn well this year. I first came to uh, the FCC back in 2019, so I missed the first few, uh, and I came to it about halfway through the year, but I managed to fill out the list by the end of the year. Uh, so this year I was kind of ready to go. As soon as you published the list, even before 2019 was over, I was matching possible games up to all the categories. Uh, so I was raring to go come January 1st. Uh, maybe not as raring to go as some people's, who we'll touch on later. Uh, but uh, yeah, completed quite a few of the categories early on, but then a few of them I kind of struggled with. Uh, and I've literally just finished my last one uh, a couple of weeks ago. And that one was for the goose egg, which was for competing, oh, yep. a, game, yeah, competing a game with a zero in the title, which gave me a little bit of trouble. I did have an option. Slim pickings. Yeah, I did have an option. Um, I think I can't remember the name of the game now. Tyler something zero, little robot uh, boy game, but it always kept pushing out. But then I managed to get myself access to a Japanese visual novel, Steins Gate Zero. Right. Yeah, which is which is a truly Japanese one, not untranslated. <laughs> so I had <laughs> no idea what was going on. Shout out to Sangrias for the. Uh, video walkthrough on that one but yet managed to get that one wrapped up which was my last one uh, so I completed it uh, it was a really That's good list so of awful. categories actually yeah uh, one of the early standouts for me was uh, fashionista uh, mm -hmm. for, for completing a game where you change your character's outfit or appearance and I used it as an opportunity to finally go back and finish up fable 3 which had been left incomplete for four years because uh, one of the achievements, the Demon Door one, had glitched on me. So I had to do a full speed run of that game, just mainlined it straight through to the completion. And that was actually quite satisfying to finally get that ticked off the list after four long years. Yeah, there's a few like that where you look mm. back and you just think, I just need something, just something stupid to push me over the edge to go back and do something that's going to be awful. Um, I did the same thing with uh, Babel Rising, the old... 200 pointer connect mm, game yeah where, I remember you know, it well mm. and it was just like this was just sitting there it actually appeared on my RTDL which was um, you know and it was a it was a high high ratio achievement so it was deep down the list uh, and I thought oh this is the opportunity right when when am I going to be able to get you know something at, at the 20th slot of my RTDL um, and that thing had been sitting there since what, 2012 or something obscene it, it was a it was an ancient game 
I got a couple of messages from community members that I reached out to who who like to partake in this madness, and I got one from uh, NBA Kirkland, who said that he really liked doing the I prefer being the bad guy challenge for completing a game where you play as the villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year he had both Untitled Goose Game and Braid. Spoiler alert uh, as <laughs> options, and he, he actually said that completing Braid in particular was a real highlight of the year for him. So I think he really enjoyed that challenge. How, how did you get on with completing the list yourself? You know, so I'm not. I'm actually not technically done with it. There is one Shut open up. here for me. It is, but you know, th- here's the other beauty of it, and, and and my list, this this whole contest for me has has been pretty casual. Like you know, I ju- it's just a thing for people to have fun with. But another community member, um, Iron Fist of Snuff, he takes it to the next level. He prefers things to be more of a contest, and so he does a completion style contest, which I enjoy partaking in, but of course can't compete with the top scores. And along those lines. Um, you know, some of the things that, that cross-pollinate between those two, they actually kind of help tip me one way or the other. And, and you know, some of those, like like the bad guy one, um, that was that was surprisingly difficult for me because you look at so many things and, you know, it's not only do I have to give the thumbs up to it, you know, I have to have somebody else now say, okay, well, I think it's okay for my contest, but is it okay for your contest? Mm. And, and you know, there have been a couple of times where I get shot down in my own contest because it it, it, it applies to, to his game, you know. And so that one, thankfully, there was a conversation about Goose Game, and I was like, oh, that's perfect because I, I was leaning on uh, Toby, the secret mine. And uh, spoiler alert um, – but you really the entire game it, that final decision you make there has absolutely no bearing on what you did the entire game. So mm. while technically there's an achievement for being the bad guy, it is literally a split second decision then it rolls credits. It's like yeah, so yeah. that one got shut down unfortunately. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's a few games like that where ostensibly you are the good guy, the hero right up until that last moment where you get a random choose the right way or choose the wrong way option and uh yeah, I can see how that's a little bit Nah, does it count? Yeah, but as I was saying, the the reason I'm not quite finished is the final game that I need to do is happen to show up on my random game of the month through the BCM, and that is Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. I have been sitting on one achievement, the stupid Vampire Super Wave, for probably two years. And Oof. if I complete that one... That will knock out the final game I need to fulfill my list, and and that would be either playing as the bad guy, um, because I needed to use something else, or, or um, playing as an undead character. Because when I made this list initially, the it's raining achievements complete a game that has more than sixty achievements. I've completed two games that have sixty achievements, but I wrote the word more. And that is super frustrating because I have only completed one game that has more than 60 achievements. So that locks in there, and that was Left 4 Dead 2, um, which is a perfect game where you play as a zombie. But unfortunately, I have to use it for the yeah. achievement one, which means I need I have this opening here. And, and th- hopefully I can get this Vampire Super Wave in the next two weeks. Mm. And, uh, and I'm really hoping, you know, it's going to be a day 10 thing for me for the for the uh, Christmas challenge, it's all about cross-pollinating, right? You, you try and hit as many contests as you can. That's, that's the meta game, stacking challenges, yeah. That is super meta. And uh, and so that's it's, I've got it penciled in right after I finish a little bit of Battleborn tonight and tomorrow. So crosses the fingers. Okay. Um, Have you made many attempts at it previously? Yeah, pr- I mean, we're probably talking in the in the double digits. Yeah, maybe maybe not quite twenty times. Eh, yeah, probably twenty plus. <laughs> it's it's brutal. It really is brutal. And of course, nobody plays it anymore. So you're mm-hmm. having a full squad of four, and and you have to go so far into it. You know, each run takes twenty to thirty minutes to get to wave ten. Uh, it's it's miserable. Okay, well, maybe we can throw it out to the community if anyone wants to join you. And on that on that challenge to try and finish it up by the end of the year. Absolutely. So like you said earlier though, I think one of the most fun things is is just planning out a list. You know, taking this thing and seeing in your games of hey, what's on here that it's kind of a low either low hanging mm-hmm. fruit or has been is, is rotten fruit has been sitting there for so long you're like I gotta I gotta take this out of here 
and it's oh that's perfect because this one fits into Rise of the Machines as using a using a robot or this one fits into here. Um, yeah. That's always one of the, the most fun things I do between now and the start of the new year. Absolutely, you look anything that involves lots and lots of spreadsheets is is really going to be ticking quite a few of our boxes. I know uh, Kronos in particular told me that that's the element he particularly enjoys. Anything involving spreadsheets. Absolutely. It's so much fun. Um, In terms of the rest of the contest, you know, Alphabet Soup... Getting games A to Z was was tough, I, and I didn't I didn't hit there. You know, I had earmarked um, a few games. There were five that I kind of I left open: G, I, J, uh, X, and Y. Mm-hmm. And and I gave I gave a good old college try to Geometry Wars for the G because that also fulfilled a twenty uh, two thousand five game for the BCM. But that is that is beyond my skill level. I am I am just not. Not that good at twin stick shooters. I love them, just can't do it. And so, I think that demoralized me to saying I just I can't finish the years, which then just toppled my ability to do the rest of the uh, the letters. You know what? Uh, I've got a I've got a bit of advice for you if you want a, a G game. Uh, there's Gnomes Garden. There's Gnomes mm-hmm. Garden Two. There's Gnomes Garden <laughs> Three. There's uh, Gnomes Garden and New Garden, or whatever they are. <laughs> my my fallback was Grim Legends Three: The Dark mm. City because mm. I also need the word dark in an achievement or in a uh, in a in a game, and and you know that's a that's a three to four hour. Uh, that's not too bad. Mm-hmm. You know, I had Ink Explosion for I, uh, Your Toy for Y. I still have X Men the the original game or oh. whatever the. Which is bad, but you know, again, not terrible to complete. Mm-hmm. It's the J, and I think my realistic J was Jetpack Refueled, but I could easily do Jump Jump Step mm-hmm. or whatever that jump, jump, step simple season. game is. I used uh, Jack Quest Tale of the Sword for my J. And there that, you that's go. A that's that's a pretty quick one, one too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, so I've uh, managed to do all but two of the letters. Uh, why I have a few options for, and I, but I don't think there are any I could do in the next couple of weeks. Maybe. Uh, X, on the other hand, I just I just don't have the options. There are, there are just not enough X games out there. I've already mm-hmm. done X Men Destiny, X Men Arcade, X Men Origins Wolverine. There's a lot <laughs> there's a lot of X Men <laughs> under the X yep. category, uh, and the other the other options are kind of the XCOM games, and I just you know I don't know those games well enough, and I really don't think that's something I could do in the next couple of weeks realistically they're not short no i love those types of games Mm. that's my favorite genre is those turn-based strategy games but uh, they are not short that's for darn sure yeah nba kirkland messaged as well and said that i think x is is where he's having his struggling points so uh, if we ever have alphabet challenges in the future i've i vote that we just ban x off the table (laughs) achievements as well there's there's just not enough x X achievements there really isn't and and planting did the same for all the all the challenges that he runs as well so it is it there's a, a growing sentiment that those need to be a- abolished. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was challenge two is the A to Z. Uh, you know, that again, I think that was probably the most difficult one. Mm-hmm. And then and then challenge three, the genre bounty hunt. Um, I tend to fancy myself quite the variety player. I, I, I like to dabble in pretty much everything. And so I don't have, you know, a game in my wheelhouse per se. You know, like I mentioned, turn-based strategies are kind of one of my favorites, but I like to sample everything uh, on the on the board. You know, if there's a, a dessert spread, I'm, I'm going to fill my plate with one of everything because it would be rude not to eat one of everything, right? They, they took all the time to cook it, so I might as well try it, which is the same thing for video games here. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I find myself pretty darn good. I, I, I had a list of 36, and those are the 36 most popular. But of course, you know, there's some of those that people just don't want to play. And I, I can't, I can't fault you if you're like, I absolutely hate roguelikes. That's just not something I want to do. Fine, put in a substitution. And uh, and so I ended up going through. I, I, I didn't get aerial. I didn't get management. I didn't get simulation. I didn't get tower defense. I'm not surprised by management and simulation. I just hate those games mm-hmm. um aerial pretty slim pickings you know it's one of the the, the lower end games um yeah. quantities per se i was surprised i didn't do a tower defense i typically like tower defense i'm surprised that didn't pop up but i did manage to score six from the wild card the bonus genres you know the mmo i never thought i'd complete one of those but thanks to the wonderful ah1 community for daisy yeah we knocked that one out um you know on rails another kind of rare one that i don't typically do sandbox those are kind of weird ones but yeah it was it, it was pretty fun 
Yeah, I was with you on that. I, I, I completely agree with you. I like to be a varied gamer. I like to try any kind of different flavors of game on the market and, and kind of dabble. So I was with you on that. And, and I, I managed 30 out of the 36 on the mainline genres uh, without too much effort, um, not particularly going for anything specific. And then I got right. I got eight of the substitutes. So I think that pretty much covers me. Um, I, I could get a few more potentially on the way. There's a few games that I, I put against genres that I could knock out. But yeah, I think Ariel for me was was one that I just thought, no, nah, no, nah, that's probably not going to happen. Collectible card game, I don't, I don't think that's, yeah, <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> so that really brings us to challenge number four, which is the RTDL crossover challenge. And you know, I think most of the community understands what the RTDL is. For those who don't, the random to do list, you get a list of twenty five achievements every month randomly. And, and and I use the random to-do list really to dictate my gaming for the month. I, I've curated my list down to, uh, you know, 100-plus games that I want to focus on. And and so when one of those comes up on the RTDL, it's like, hey, this is your opportunity. Let's get this thing off your tag, uh, you know, put this thing to bed. And that was kind of the, the brainchild for, for where this challenge came. Um, surprisingly easy for me. It's, you know, certainly getting those low-hanging fruits, not too bad, right? There's a mm-hmm. bunch of quick gamer score here on, you know, and I, I look at the the first four the first four slots, um, you know. So if you think achievement one, two, three, and four, I had 13 games that I completed in that that section there. Of course, only four of them count, but you know that's all easy stuff to pull off. It's the later games where you get some of those high ratios that. You know, thankfully we've got some of the Game Pass boosts going in there, but um, you know, Children of Morta probably gets some of that. Untitled Goose Game for sure gets that. But uh, you know, like Drawful Two, playing for that to, to completion, you got know, some 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 long ones in there. Ocean Horn, mm-hmm. that gave me a lot more trouble than I thought it would. Uh, that game is miserable. So this this challenge actually makes a comeback in this uh, in 2021, which we'll get to in a little mm. bit. But uh, what what do you think of the crossover challenge? So I really enjoyed this one from from, from a different few different perspectives. You know, RTDL similar to you, use it as an opportunity to kind of tell me what to play, and I and I do the meta stacking. So if I've got a, a Chewie's Challenge Championship on a specific theme, I might try and load up, curate the list to kind of support that a little bit. Um, so I really enjoy doing that as well. I also do the scavenger mode. Uh, RTDL all day baby oh so good and and you know and that gets me getting my spreadsheets out as well filling up my to-do list and trying to whittle down those lists so I've already got kind of an uber RTDL spreadsheet going and then to, to add in this extra layer of trying to knock out completions in each specific slot on the list uh it was just it was dreamy it was just dreamy for me and actually it's so fun <laughs> I, I i overegged it a bit because i was so excited i didn't actually read the, the fine print that said that you only needed to do 15. Uh, I, I assumed <laughs> we were going for the full 25. so i'd done my 15 by july um, yeah. And right, but you know, I did slow off at that point. Uh, so by now, I'm actually sitting at about 17. Having said that, though, I should I should put a big asterisk on that that says, as well as scavenger mode, I am also on easy mode. So a fair amount of those are low ratio on the lower ratio side, and quite a lot of easy games, quite a, a, a heavily curated collection. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not claiming that it's anything particularly difficult. Um, Fable was on there, Fable Three, uh, which yeah. you know, I was particularly pleased with. That's probably my my hardest or longest completion on that list. Um, a lot of easy stuff, but but yeah, I really enjoyed that and i'm really glad it's making a comeback next year well and and i made it with a vengeance because i am with you i was the same way i was done a f- you know between may and june i finished it in june i had uh three the final three put me over the edge um and and i think i finished with 18 overall but that was the trend it was like boy i, I didn't think it was going to be this easy uh, so that's why we 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 made uh, challenge four this year to go up to at least twenty. I'll give you five slots that you don't have to do, but we're going all the way up to twenty this year because we need that extra challenge, don't we? Yeah, definitely. Before we move on to twenty twenty one, you also offered um, a little bonus prize this year for anyone who managed to complete all four of your challenges by the end of the year. And I'm assuming you thought some people might go hard at it, but it would probably last a fair few months. But it didn't, did it? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, that was actually, and, and Chin Doctor approached me with that one. And um, I mean, I 
you know, they, the the Real Gamer Score podcast had a whole thing set up mm. for it. And, of course, you, you just can't underestimate the achievement hunting community. Mm. They will they will wow you with their ability to <laughs> focus <laughs> and get things done. Yeah, so our very own uh, Kingsman2625, uh, Mr. 99%, managed to 100% your four challenges by February. Before the end of February, he was done with all four that's that's 30 categories uh completions in every single letter of the alphabet 36 genres and 15 slots on his rtdl lists all by the end of the second month of the year that that's just crazy it's, it's to me it's just insanity yeah i mean it's i've actually got a really uh, nice message from kingsman here that i'm going to read out to you uh, kingsman says this is my favorite community event I love how Free manages the different challenge subsets, as I would not have played Yoku's uh, Island Express if it were not for this challenge. Each challenge makes you look at games from a creative perspective rather than just as points. I was so happy to have finished titles like Hitman Absolution, Metal Gear Solid, Grand Zeroes, and For Honor. However, on the flip side, forcing me to play a bunch of not-so-great games like X-Men The Official Game, as we've already mentioned, should be considered a war crime. So uh, he's he's definitely someone who really took the bull by the horns uh, and really enjoys it. And I think he's definitely looking forward to what's in store next year. So speaking of which, twenty twenty one, baby, here it comes, right around the corner. And I I like to you know this is typically the time when I like to post these lists because you know we've got the countdown to the end of the the countdown to New Year's sale coming up. You've seen a sample of what it was around Thanksgiving. Typically, they repeat it toward the end of the year here. And here's your opportunity to fill your coffers with new games that, you know, could possibly hit some of these that come up for next year. Mm. So, of course, like every year, I come up with the 30 categories. And, and similar to what Kingsman said, you know, I try to – you'll see a couple of themes that kind of pop up. You know, I get an idea in my head, and it's like, oh, here's three iterations of the same theme, you know. So, like – regions for developers that you know there's three of them last year in terms of europe and the u.s you know so there's a couple things like that this year but i try to be nice and varied because to what kingsman said you have to look at your games to be a little bit creative on how you approach it and, and actually absorb the game a little bit uh, you know it's so easy to get gamer score these days that you might not even get an understanding of what you're doing in the game after the 15 minutes to, you know, fulfill the the thousand gamer score. So this at least it gives you an opportunity to take a look at it. And uh, I've already, you know, had some comments from people in the community just just looking for a couple of clarifications here. I've I've highlighted a few, and, and this obviously is not an exhaustive list, but you know, I'm going to kind of go through a couple here that that may trip people up and kind of where my thinking is. Uh, I'll start with number one here, Grim Outlook. Complete a game that com uh, contains the Grim Reaper or someone identified as death. Um, you know, obviously if someone's, one of the games that pops into my head is Grim Fandango. Oh, the game I, I finished, I mean, I'm glad I finished it this year because I was dying <laughs> yeah. to finish it, but now I know I can't use it next year. For this yep. yeah. But it's like, I don't think that character's name is death. I don't think he's called the Grim Reaper, but like, that very much fits with the yeah. the theme of this. I think he is category. He is a reaper uh, among many yeah. reapers uh, in the. Uh, I think it's the Department of Death, if I remember rightly. There yeah. you go. You know, so so something along those lines. You know, a game like Goner that actually has a character called Death. Uh, but the idea is is that there is an entity that you know brings souls to the afterlife. Um, you know, so don't don't get too caught up on the semantics on that one. Uh, one of those that is causing some some conversations is anthropomorphic. Now, mm. Chewy, what? Uh, or sorry, Mister Baca, what what exactly? How would you define anthropomorphic? Because maybe I have uh, a distorted view of what an anthropomorphic creature is. So, in in my eyes, an anthropomorphic creature would be uh, an animal that is presented with. Uh, human-like characteristics in some form. So that might be that they uh, can talk, they can uh, walk, they can wear clothes. Um, right. Opposable are, thumbs helps. Opposable thumbs. They are sort of humanized in some form. It, usually right. a creature that would otherwise not be. So I think Wookiees, <laughs> for example... Uh, or other aliens in, say, Star Trek or or Star Wars type universes, I would not count those as anthropomorphic right. because they and are. I tried to include that. Uh, or they are already kind of 
humanoid uh, as opposed yes. to taking a cat and putting it in clothes and getting it to speak. <laughs> Perfect. That that aligns perfectly with my intention here. And so there was just some confusion along that line because, you know, I went with the fantasy route of thinking like elves and dwarves, you know, that's not that's not anthropomorphic anything, right? Those are just different types of humans. Mm. Um, but, but things I'm thinking of are like a game I completed this last year, Hunter's Legacy. You know, that is a, a cat who carries a bow and arrow with him. Mm. Um, yeah, or, you know. um, oh, what's the game that they're just doing a sequel of that, won't, that isn't coming out? Uh, Beyond Good and Evil uh, has has a walking, talking pig man. There you go. There you go. So, th- so uh, you know, one of the questions was, does Claptrap count? Okay, well, no, you know, I tend to think of anthropomorphic as animals, mm. right? Robots, robots don't necessarily fit that for me. And, uh, you know, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Laylee. For ukulele, right? And and I'm not super uh, well versed in that game, but to me, Laylee is still pretty much a bat. Maybe talks, but I think yuka, yeah, yuka. is yeah. would count, right? So it's the same yeah. game. I mean, if you're thinking, I that's think... basically Banjo Kazooie, and Banjo is a what a, an ape who wears shorts. So I think that's that counts. <laughs> <laughs> is is he? I think he's a bear, isn't he? A is bear? he a bear? I the, I okay. Who knows? It's just pixels. <laughs> Yeah, He's it's all I'm, it's all nonsense. I'm going to edit that out. But no one's going to hear me say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fug knows best oh, here. I, so um, I was going to pick that one up. It's just a great shout out to the community there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and Fug and I game. We we game every Sunday. Yeah, uh, we we kind of a running boosting session. And so um, I do like the fact that there's no vowels in his name. And I thought, boy, that that would be kind of fun and tricky. Uh, you know, there's a couple is it, in is there. Is it possible? That I, I can't find it. It is possible. <laughs> Um, you know, because I think of the game 140, you know, g- games that use numbers uh, only. Yes, Q um, uh, is one, yeah. Yeah, um, what's the uh, RGBY or RRB, whatever that game is. Yes. Uh, th- there's there's some out there. Yep, Q is a good one because Y doesn't count and numbers don't count. Mm-hmm. So, but this, this is going to be a tough one. This is going to be a tough one for sure. Yeah. Yeah, th- that's when I'm going to be scouring the... Uh... The search searches on TA for. I really like the pop culture references ones personally. I like uh, you've got a Shaun of the Dead reference in there with uh, you've got red on you. You've got red on yeah. you. Yep. And I was going to bring that one up because we also have war. War never changes. Mm. Um, and those are, you know, you may have seen those in some of the GTA C categories or themes where you need to get a piece of the word right. So, so for war, war never changes. We're looking for the consecutive letters W A R, and so that can be in the word warfare, that can be in the for- word warlock, that can be in the word warrior. I'm okay with that, uh, you know. And same thing with with red, right? You can sneak red in pretty much anywhere. Sometimes I'm a little more specific, you know. Along those lines is the official category of 2021. That has to be the standalone word the, T H E, and it cannot be the first word. So the example I use is the long dark, no good. Among the sleep, that's a winner. So, you know, that's very specific. You can't use the word then. You can't use the word there. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to be the. And so so some of them are a little bit more strict, but others... Uh, others you get a little bit more uh, of an option mm. yeah i also uh, i think the community members chesno and crazy catman uh, should enjoy the joint cat got your tongue and i'm more of a dog person challenges yep. for completions yep. involving felines and canines right yeah. right and and now to be specific for those that doesn't you know because there is another challenge on here that involves an animal companion um these cats and dogs don't have to be companions Mm -hmm. they could be actual characters you know it could be a villain could be but some type of canine or feline creature Mm -hmm. um but the animal companion one that absolutely has to be a companion that 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 critter has to follow you around right so uh beyond eyes is a good example of a game with a cat where you play a blind girl following uh, a cat uh, Mm -hmm. around but that cat would not count as a companion because it's pretty much running away from you for most of the game bingo yeah. bingo you know and it's funny like i mentioned i i do these uh categories a year before uh you know so this list for 2021 uh pretty much started in february and march and so you can kind of see where the uh the theme are you sick or something complete a game that contains a disease infection or sickness <laughs> where that might have come from mm. um but you know, the, the other one that, that kind of was 
interesting, um, you know, that I, that I kind of liked here was uh, the Year of the Ox. I typically always try to do one with the uh, Chinese calendar, and there's not a lot of games out there with oxen. Um, and so this one broadens it a little bit for for an animal with at least one horn. So so that could be that could be a rhino, that could be a minotaur, that could be you know it's just something with some type of horn. Yeah. And and one of the games that pops into my head is the game uh, Enslaved Odyssey to the West. Uh, there is a a rhino type machine. Yeah. Um, in there. Mm-hmm. Now I say in the details here that it, I want the keratinous type, not not the brass instrument. The Enslaved Odyssey that 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 would count for me, right? That the horn is intended to be. A, you know, a fighting weapon. I was trying to distinguish it from a a musical instrument. Uh, so, even though I wrote Kratnus and that thing is definitely going to be made of metal, uh, the idea is a creature or something that uh-huh. has a horn that's used for uh, either defense or or attacking. Now, would you accept uh, the uh, Spider-Man villain Rhino in that category? Yeah, I I, I feel like I'd have to. Oh. Um, although I do say the word animal. You know, I think creativity-wise, I'd give that a thumbs up. That is nice. that is out of the box thinking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, there's, there's some really great, interesting categories. And to be clear, uh, with all of these, you cannot use the same game twice. So, uh, if you've got a game that fits multiple car- categories, you've got to choose one to slot it into. You can't use it. You can't use uh, the cat, uh, who might also be a companion in both categories. Correct. Yep. That is true. Um, so that brings us to challenge two, and, and I do like the idea of, of doing an alphabet each year, but I didn't want to repeat. I, we already went through the letters and saw how difficult that was, and so it dawned on me that you know there are so many developers out there, and with the ease in which games can be self-published, you know there is a ton of different opportunities for so many developers out there, and I don't think really we give them a a fair shake i don't think they get in the limelight quite as much you know you'll get your cd project reds and your rock stars you know those those are the big names but you know some of your smaller developing studios you don't get to they don't get to shine quite as much and so this is their opportunity um now granted there might be some in there that you don't care to support uh so you know you have to work your way around those but i've looked through and 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 there's at least one for everything. That's what I was going to ask: Is there one for every letter? I know, I know that in this case there is a good choice for X. Uh, our friends Zitalon, uh, right? But I wasn't clear on on some of the other like Qs and Ys and all of that stuff. But yeah, I assume uh, you've done Q, the legwork. <laughs> I did. I did. That there are some that are that are quite slim, you know. And and personally, I I'm not sure I want to support. Zidlion, so I may need to find my own X somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it comes down to it, and I really want to complete this challenge, I, I may just have to do it. Maybe it'll be Games with Gold, <laughs> and I'll get it for free. Yeah, so uh, Kingsman actually told me that this is one challenge that he's really looking forward to doing, because uh, he said that uh, challenging us to complete games from those who put the hard work into those games is a really great way of celebrating and acknowledging them. Uh, and, and I kind of share, share that sentiment. In the same way, I like to play lots of games from different genres. I, I personally like to uh, try games from all kinds of corners of the world and, and independents up to AAAs. So... Uh, seeing what other developers have uh, offering, then then I think this is a really good way of, of exploring that. Totally agree, right? And that's really the beauty of, of gaming here is, is giving people an opportunity to share their art and share their, their passions. Um, that's why I, I typically like indie games so much is people are willing to take risks and tell, tell a story that's meaningful to them in some instances. Some people just want to make a fun 2D platformer. That's fine too. <laughs> um, so along those lines, we moved into, in, you know, along similar to what we did with the genre, we got the publishers here. And so we've got the publisher bounty board where I went on uh, TA and I took the top 25 publishers. You know, these are, are in terms of quantity of games released. Mm. Um, and some of these, you know, there's the, certainly many of them stand out and you, you totally understand what they are. But others... Um, you know, I had to I had to pull out some of the uh, Windows 8 teams. I don't think Gameloft stayed in here, but you know, there's certainly going to be publishers on here that you don't necessarily want to support either. And again, that's where the wild cards come into play because um, you know there there should be enough in here for everybody to get tw- 25 out of this list. 
similar to developers, I think, you know, it's an, an opportunity to explore maybe some different areas of gaming that you hadn't previously explored uh, with some publishers who have a kind of a niche maybe in a certain genres mm-hmm. or, or types of games. So yeah. I'm, I look at uh, Koei Te- Tecmo, mm-hmm. you know, that, that, that those, that's typically a publisher I do not play Absolutely. games from. Yeah, yeah or a co- Codemasters if you really want to get into racing games. Mm-hmm. Uh, Milestone as well, they do a lot of uh, racing games, so... Yeah, yeah. I'd be interested to see what's out there. Mm-hmm. And and there's a lot of things you'll be surprised that they that they do, right? You'll go through and it's like, I, like I said, I don't do a lot of 2K games, mm. and there'll be a lot of big names, you know, like your Bioshocks and things. But they got some other strange ones in there. Or EA. Yeah. EA is a good example, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they have tons of different sports pieces, but... If you remember the EA originals, yeah. you know you go you go to some of those. Uh, so, those Song of gems. the Deep, Song of the Deep, and EA one. I, I think. Am I right in thinking that? Uh, sea of Solitude, I think, is the one you're thinking of. Yeah. So Isn't that a one of the EA ones? I'm thinking of Fay for yes. myself. Yeah, but, yeah, and and the uh, Ubisoft as well. They they did their um, little smaller games. Um, mm-hmm. Child of Light and Child of Light's Valiant beautiful. Hearts. It's a couple of really great games published by yeah. uh, Ubisoft. Small games. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So there we go. And then, like we mentioned earlier, the crossover, RTDL crossover, one of, by far one of my favorite things we do each month. Like you, it's scavenger hunt all the way and being able to go through and, um, you know, pare down your list from 600 possibles down to 150, down to, and you just continue to, to narrow it down based on ratios. Oh my god, it's so fun! Yeah. I could spend, I spend the first two days of each month just paring down lists. It's great. I enjoy doing that more than I do playing the game sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, uh, and so uh, this year again, if you guys, and this, like I said, is always just for fun. Um, you know, I don't personally want to make this a leaderboard thing. I don't want to make this into anything. This is just something for you to do in the background, some targets to do for the year. I did offer to uh, let my categories go into the BCM again this year. So if you are looking for something a little bit more competitive, sign ups for Iron Fist of Snuff's uh, Better Completions Matter contest are open, and you can you can do that. Uh, but again, this is just kind of a for fun, um, you know. And if you have any questions or anything, you need a you need a ruling, you need a referee on a, a game, go ahead and uh, and let me know, and and I'll do my best to answer it. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, uh, I personally will be looking forward to doing this uh, again next year. And if I mentioned earlier, if anyone wants to uh, check back to this year's list, 2020's list, and see how they did, they can find that uh, in your blog, uh, I believe, Freem. Uh, it's probably mm-hmm. the easiest place to find it. Um, I put it there. And it's also pinned somewhere in AH101's it's, Discord. It's, it is in one of the pins in one of the channels. I can say for certain, though, that uh, this upcoming year's uh, list, uh, the document that you produced, is pinned in the general channel uh, at the moment in AH101. So if anyone wants to see what they want to do for next year, all the categories that we've discussed, um, and the developer and publisher challenges, and then RTDL 2.0, find it in the pins in general. Uh, and if anyone wants to chat about this, then, you know, Discord is the place to go. Okay, well, I think that's everything from me. Did you want to add anything, Freem? No, that's it, Mr. Baca. I appreciate the opportunity, and I absolutely adore the, the Chewies Contest Championship or whatever the CCC stands for. It's so much fun to listen I, to. I feel bad now because it's only really just dawned on me that you had the FCC for so long, so many years, and then I've come in with CCC. Just completely unoriginal, uh, and I feel quite bad actually now that now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Thank you, Freem, for joining me in, and and also for creating this this madness and and putting all of your time and effort into it. Uh, it is very much appreciated by a, a whole group of the community. Uh, so we look forward Wonderful. to this coming year. For sure, I'll see you guys on the the Discord. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye bye. Super hot. Super hot. Super hot, super hot, super hot. Hello, I'm Akapay, letting you know Super Hot Mind Control Delete was just added to Game Pass, which undoubtedly will give it an extra TA boost. Currently, the completion is 1000 game score worth 2200 TA, but I'm sure it won't get close to the 5200 TA of Super Hot. Mind Control Delete is a direct sequel to Super Hot, one of the most innovative shooters I've played in years. 
and was given for free to those who bought the original Superhot. The narrative is not the main reason to play Superhot, but it is kind of cool. Mind Control Delete expands on the high concept slow motion gun and melee fights of the first game. Unfortunately, I'm not a fan of the new game design or story. Superhot had a short campaign with linear handcrafted levels, making it more of a puzzle shooter figuring out how to deal with each level. Mind Control Delete offers the same kind of gameplay, but adds a bunch of randomness, making it sort of roguelite-ish. While the levels are pre-made, they are randomly selected for each run. The levels no longer have set enemy placements, enemies spawn randomly across the level, and there are new enemy types which randomly shows up from time to time. There are also power-ups which you can randomly choose from between levels once you've unlocked them. This means that every time you play the game it behaves slightly differently. It also means that the carefully crafted scenarios of the first game are replaced with generic fights. Instead of being a few hours long, it takes around 10 hours to finish the mind control delete campaign, which is all you need for the completion. The side content from the first game is no longer needed to get all achievements, and playing through the story should get you everything. Should being a key word here, as multiple players have had progress achievements glitch out on them, with the only way to earn them being to delete their save and start over from the beginning. At the end of the game, there's also a two and a half hour progress bar, which has to fill up before getting your final achievement, where you can't do anything but wait for it to finish. This is a key part of the story which is themed around addiction. Like the first game, Mind Control Delete frequently tells you to stop playing the game, and it is way more persuasive this time, as it is way longer and grindier than the first campaign and does not offer the same air of mystery. The completion is easier for Mind Control Delete, However, it is not as fun as the first game, and while the new powers are cool, they are randomly given to you as you play through the l randomly selected set of levels with randomly appearing enemies. It's not a bad game, but I found the first Superhot superior to Mind Control Delete, and since Mind Control Delete is a direct sequel, I recommend checking out the first game first, then decide whether you want more of the same, except less predictable. Have a nice day everyone!